Yep, so if you donate $125, you are able to win that Gauss rifle. Um, although it looks like the donation was closed during Celestial Chapter, so unfortunately that one seems to have been closed. So anyways, we are good to go on the Diablo 2 speedrun. Take it away, Mr. Llama. All right. Can you guys hear me? We all good? I can. <laughs> all right. Sounds good. I will go ahead and continue off that. So character name is Amazone. Is that what we ended on? Amazone. I yep. believe that was the one that won the bid war. All right. Let us get the Amazon. So I'll go ahead and count this down. And then we'll begin the Diablo 2 speedrun. Ready? Five, four, three, three two, two, one, one go! go! <laughs> so right off the bat, I'm going to be throwing down my shield. And a lot of people always freak out about it. This is probably my most asked comment on shadow. YouTube, uh, which is why do you throw your shield on the ground? And the reason is because I don't actually want to block right here. Blocking takes frames, and we are speedrunners, of course, so we're all about saving the frames. Uh, beyond that, I'm just simply going to be trying to get some gold out here. And there's th some throwing knives, so those will actually be really nice and helpful. And path is not kicking out, but we have a well, so that'll replenish our stamina. So I'm going to go ahead and leave a TP right here, and I just want to kind of level up. Um, like I said, I want to get gold because I want to buy some stamina potions, and I want to buy some javelins. Throwing knives are going to be that amount of gold. So that is the first hurdle tackled uh, in this nice long run. Um, the fun about Diablo 2, or a little bit of the difference about Diablo 2, is that there's so many different categories, and there's so much RNG and just everything uh, with this run that really changes it up and really makes it just a lot of fun. So you can sit there, and I've run before here, and I've done Sorceress and Druid, and you have, of course, the Assassin, you have the Paladin, Amazon, Barbarian, Necromancer, right. So lots of different characters, and each character kind of runs in their own specific way. Um, you have magic, you have physical damage, and this character is going to start out with physical damage, and then we're going to shift over into magic damage as we're kind of going on from there. And before I do too much, I'm going to grab some more javelins. Hi. I'll just introduce my couch really fast. I have Funk Master. He is a Diablo 1 speedrunner. Go ahead and wave. Say hi. hi Hello, everybody. guys. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and then Miss Kylie. Hello. She just she plays variety. But she's played Diablo 2 a little bit. She got to Act 5 and then was like, nah, I'm out. <laughs> But, uh, good choice. She, she gave it a good, you know, she gave it a solid effort at least, so we appreciated that. <laughs> so for the first few levels, this character is going to kind of be awful. Uh, I have no better way to put it, except this is, if there was one thing that I could change about Diablo 2, it would probably be um, the early game. And you're not going to see it in this, like, very initial stage, but you'll see it when we're just trying to get to level 6, which is when I can get to a skill that actually... Um, does a 100% chance to hit damage. Because otherwise, I'm going to be sitting here throwing javelins and having to go through the defense attack rating calculation uh, to determine if I hit. And spoiler, I don't hit as often as I would l really like. So that's always a little bit annoying. Um, why I'm clearing out this den right now and I have to kill every single monster that's just part of the quest is because... I want to get the respec, which means later on in the game, uh, that guy's annoying. Um, later on in the game, I can respec and get uh, a complete change of my skills, essentially. So I'm going to use a certain skill, Poison Javelin, for a lot of this run. And then when I hit 18, I'm going to switch over into Charge Strike, which will be a lot better for killing bosses and things of that nature, though it is a little more dangerous since I will be getting up close and personal with a lot of the uh, monsters at that time. So getting some good resistances can also be helpful, especially fire res for later on. Um, but that's, that's something else that we'll just have to worry about later. For right now, I'm just trying to find some good gold uh, so that I can have some money coming out of this and heading into the next stage of the game. I'm going to be trying to constantly balance my javelin numbers right here. Um, I'll definitely miss it. It's not a 
Q to deal if I don't always swap them out because it's just a little bit of gold. So depending on what my gold situation's like, I'll care more or less about it. We're going to be trying to balance the numbers so that I'm never at a point where I am uh, burning through all of my javelins and have to go back and chop for them. Like I say, it might happen at one time. Um, not too huge of a deal. Rare javelins right there can be nice. I might be able to get some cold damage or something on those to help out a little bit later. But ultimately, those aren't even that big of a deal because, like I said, a lot of my damage is going to be coming from the skills themselves as opposed to damage coming from the uh, javelins themselves. So not as big of a deal. And thankfully, we did not run into an issue right there of uh, missing one of the monsters. And we did get a cold damage on it, so that is really nice. So I'll probably leave those on my offhand, and that'll actually be useful a little bit later on. I do not have a lot of money right now, so we're just going to kind of make do as we can, and that should hopefully be fine. So uh, this game right here is the sequel. Oh, nice. We found two open socket armor. To Diablo 1, as I said before, I don't even have money for that. The sequel to Diablo 1, um, it's a flashy new title, rocking a whopping 25 frames per second. <laughs> can you count to 25 in a second? I can only count to 20. Yeah. <laughs> this game can. That's all I can tell you. We'll work on that later, Funk. <laughs> What, Diablo 1 only plays in 20 FPS. There you go. So once again, big boost to this game. I don't know if we'll see a title that can surpass it for a while. But, you know, we'll see. We shall see. Additionally, uh, with the expansion, Lord of Destruction, they upgraded the res resolution from 640 by 480 to the mind-blowingly large 800 by 600. It's crazy how many pixels I can see on this screen right now and how many are not actually the game but this tiny little window. Um, <laughs> just some fun. This game actually came out in 2000, uh, so it is a little bit old, but it is a classic. It's one of my favorite games, which is why I've been speedrunning it for four years. Um, and, and what I also love about it is just the RNG and the craziness there. And we might actually stop and do Kane uh, at this point, since I think we have save Kane as that incentive. So I'll go ahead and uh, do a little Kane save early on. That might help with our levels as well. Because like I say, leveling up can start to get pretty rough. Uh, it still looks OK so far. But you'll see me start to miss a little bit here. And as I'm really pushing towards that level 6, it's just going to get really bad. So right now, I'm just looking for stony fields as well. Um, it should be somewhere near this path. So I'm just kind of running around, and there we go. And hopefully, we get some good shots. Nice. Man, I must have put some hacks in here or something. <laughs> it's really nice. That looks so much easier than with uh, Assassin. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, so this is once again the difference. When you have a character like this, or just a melee character, especially because there's not really melee splash in this game, um, it puts you into a, a rough position of this one single shot that doesn't even guarantee a hit every time. Uh, and so later on, when you have like super geared up characters, yeah, they're hitting everything all the time, and it's fine. When you're speed running, <laughs> it turns into that game sometimes. Where the javelins are going, I don't really know, but not into that minion. Uh, so we almost have that five. Oh, yeah, I'm going to leave a TP there. So we'll go ahead and drop that town portal. And this, once again, is a part of the forward backwards strats where I'm going to move forwards and then move backwards. It's pretty crazy, right? Um, so I do like finding any of these boss groups. Boss groups are huge for this game. This is going to give me, they give 500% experience. So this is why I'm very much focusing on them, and I will definitely be coming back for those archers over there as well. And we'll switch into our super jabs now because they look cooler. Um, once again, still not a ton added here, but you know, we get a little boost. And oh, they do have a chance for amplified damage. It's actually not bad at all. 
So this level up is really nice uh, because it's going to just continue to give me, when you do this calculation of do I hit or not hit, um, that actually matters a lot, your level in the calculation, which is kind of awful for speedrunning considering you're always trying to run at a inferior level or you know a, a lower level than normal. So that's especially why melee just really doesn't work out very well, or physical damage, I should say. Just doesn't work out near as well, um, as opposed to just having a magical character which hits every single time. So that, that right there is one of the big reasons that this run is 220, as opposed to like a 130 or something. That's one of the initial reasons there. Um, we're doing okay though on experience. We're at five and a half already. Like I said, once I can get to six, I will be uh, pretty happy. But back to the RNG of this game, it is just insane. And it's kind of a, it's a weird concept when you look at, or compare it to a run such as, you know, Metroid or whatever, where RNG is like, oh, is this going to take, you know, a couple times? How many times is he jumping? One or 12, right? Or three or 12. Like, that definitely is some RNG, but Diablo 2, I'm exploring all the maps, the item drops are random, the gold drops are random, the monster bosses are random, the types of shrines that you get are random. Uh, pretty much everything in this game, as any or most ARPGs are, is just going to be random. Um, there are little guides that can help you along the way, such as I know this exit right here is supposed to be on that straight across path. And so it gives you sort of guides to say, hey, you should run kind of towards this way. But nothing is set in stone. And uh, oh boy, that's not going to be fun. Oh, geez. All right, we're going to run around a little bit. Unfortunately, we have a double boss group here, but we do not have the javelins for it. So we're going to run around. Um, the reason is because I do want to go save Kane right now. And yeah. So I have these jabs. If I find or had an ID scroll, I could ID those other jabs, and we'd be somewhat mildly OK. And there we go. We found Darkwood Waypoint. So not too bad at all. Because I'm actually going to be looking for the tree here. But uh, one of the things that you definitely want to note with it is get that out of the way. Um, the fact that with all this RNG, you're constantly just having to make predictions. So I'd say this game looks easy. It's easier than it, or it's harder than it looks. Uh, but additionally, a lot of the stuff that you're, you're constantly just doing quick calculations in your mind anytime you see something new with the map, a new piece of it, because you have to say, is this where I need to be running? Is this going to lead me to um, you know, the quickest spot to the exit? Is this a dead end? So you're constantly adjusting based on what you think the uh, map is going to do. And that change right there um, is pretty significant, I feel like, compared to other games. And honestly, I thought it wouldn't be near as difficult when I first got into it, which is why I actually started speedrunning Diablo 2. I thought, I watched it one time and I went, oh man, this will be a breeze. I could get a world record in like a single run. And then four and a half hours later, with my head in my hands, after like two weeks of practice, I was like, oh, never mind. <laughs> But thankfully, we stuck with it. So that was, you know. Wait, it good. only took you four hours for your first run? Four and a half. But that was through normal. And like I said, I practiced a lot. And that was on a Sorceress as well, not an Amazon. I gave up after seven. <laughs> <laughs> well, you got the Diablo one down, though. So it's always good. It's only 20 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> so one of the nice things here is we got this waypoint. How did I throw out of that already? Uh, we got this waypoint, and I'm going to get my level 6, so I'm pretty happy about that. I also have these shrines on the way, which will be very nice. And there is that beautiful level 6 that we just love seeing. Uh, before we go there, though, we're going to head back here, and I guess I'll just do that and repair this really fast. We're going to head back here. We'll talk to Akara, and then we will move our way over there. So people always freak out about saving um, those skill points, but the reason is because I want to double down on them. That and, and not great. So I'm, what I mean by that is I want to use them each time for two skills. So every level, I'm going to slowly spend those out until I no longer need them anymore. 
So at this point, we'll just see what stone order is. Quick run around there. So normally this isn't in the speed run. Uh, this is something that, right, this is just kind of for that fun incentive. Um, while it's nice to save Kane from a maybe uh, whatever perspective, just moral, um, it slows you down. So generally, he finds his way out eventually. At the same time, we'll go ahead and get a little bit of experience from down here. And like I say, you can see this is a thousand times better than the torture we had to watch before. Thankfully, uh, we really didn't have that, that hard of a time to six. We had a lot of really good boss groups, and that helped us out a ton. I'll also go ahead and grab Wurt's leg at this time, as Wurt's leg is very helpful. And I'll actually quit and then go back in. I miss Amazon. Uh, as we are going to be checking these shrines again, and there's a chance that I can have an experience shrine. So once again, I said shrines are random. Oh, there we go. Uh, oh my gosh, we'll just we'll just double up on that. Shrines are random in this game, and so this is one of those moments where you have to start making decisions, right? We just ran into two experience shrines. That's about a one in twelve chance of finding that right there. Uh, and of course, you know, just the way statistics work, the more often you don't find it, the better the chances get. Uh, that you're going to find another one. It's like when you're flipping a coin, right? A lot of averages says it'll be 50-50, so more heads means more tails in the future. So now we're probably going to have a worse chance for experience shrines there. But the fact that we got two experience shrines is really nice um, because I'm going to go ahead and make this... Qu oh, I just... All right, I got nothing to say now except this is a hack <laughs> game file. Um, so, so really, like I say, it's really... You don't get experience shrines... Is this that the Teo run? Yeah, seriously. <laughs> Teo is a runner who is, well, known for getting all of the experience shrines. And uh, does quite well with all of them. Usually not my luck. So I'm just going to push forward. And I'm going to continue going forward because I just got another shrine. So like I said, this is where the runs start to get a little bit weird or a little bit different. Um, because I'm actually, normally I would, I'd just be doing the tower, right? I would go in the tower and I would just be farming down there. But since I already have that shrine, I don't want to waste the potential of this shrine. So I will continue forward with this shrine, essentially until it's about to run out, roughly around there. And then I'll take a waypoint back, go get that other shrine. And then we'll continue down into the tower going after the runes that we want. Uh, and the runes are a very important part of the run. So me skipping forward here a little bit is a little bit unsafe, you might say, because if I get a ton of experience here and then go back and it takes a long time to get the runes, it could be bad. But at the same time, we only need Tal and Eth rune. So that is uh, really nice and really helpful as opposed to needing a lot of runes, such as the Barbarian who needs Tal, 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 Eth, Ith, El, Eth, Ral, uh, probably about one round, and a second round, and a couple tiers are helpful. So a little bit of a difference, you might say, between the characters. And I am only level seven, so I can't even activate that yet. So let's head back. And if you want to do a couple donations now, you can as I uh, just move around here. All right. We have $5 from General Turtle. Donating this from my phone. What? Don't you have one? <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Let it begin. <laughs> we have $475 from Zem. As wow. Oh, oh hand <laughs> As promised, here's $25 for each of my 19 deaths. It was a pleasure getting to run for you all, and let's get that one million as fast as possible. Nice. What nightmarish tortures took place here? All right, I'm, I'm in jail level one, so I'm actually going to go ahead and work my way over to the waypoint. Uh, hopefully it's pretty close, and we don't have to go too far over here. But I feel like at this point, let's just grab waypoint, head backwards, and then we should be good to go. That's going to be a dead end, all right. Anyway, should be good to go. Otherwise, though, I'd want to be running straight across. So like I say, hopefully this map it isn't going to be too rough on us. The nice thing is we are getting good experience here. 
So this is actually some stuff we've been playing around with lately um, in some other categories, which is really pushing early on, um, not doing a lot in the tower, and then just playing for like super lucky tower runs. Uh, it's a little bit messy because it ends up being just super like, you, gotta, you just got to get lucky, right? Let me just pray that I get the runes I need immediately. Um, and it looks like this isn't the greatest jail level one, but that's okay. We'll just take this back. So now we'll go, get, go ahead and get our second experience shrine, and then we'll continue our way down. I believe I'm almost out of jabs, though, so I will need to watch that. Might have to go back. We'll see how it plays out. But another experience shrine, more experience, always good. Um, leveling up is one of the other factors of this game that is really underplayed or underthought of uh, when you first start running. So you kind of see it and you go, oh yeah, you know, why don't you just run straight forward to the end? And then it's like, oh, you need the runes. But it's not just the runes. You also need to be getting that beautiful experience because if you run without it, it's going to just leave you in a very difficult position. And we actually have a really nice map right here on level two. This boss will always be here. Um, or 99% of the time, I should say, will be here. And it's also a really good boss, being those goat men. So I'm very happy about that. And there we go. Dodge the cold blast. So yeah, so this is going to be, I'll probably run down here a few times. Um, like I said, I'm aiming for Tal and Ethrune. Tal has about a 50% drop rate. Eth has about a 30% drop rate. So in total, it's about an 80% chance for both to drop at the same time. But we'll just have to see how lucky we get or how unlucky we get. Depends how many runes she drops, right? So if you want to read a couple more donations, you can, as uh, this part can get a little monotonous. <laughs> We have $50 from Ray's QT. Let's go, Mr. Llama. This run is always the highlight of my year. Remember, the Path of Exile community has your back. <laughs> Trying to swing me over there. I see what you're doing. <laughs> Yikes. I love the POE community, though. Big shout out to them. You can do another if you like. We have $25 from Evo Demon. On behalf of all your Twitch mods, good luck on today's run, Llama. Can you share some insight into the Diablo 2 bug that Kylie found that allows you to wear your gloves on your feet? <laughs> feet gloves, I think you called them? Yes, yes, yes. Oh the, the wonderful feet gloves. No. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. That exists? No. <laughs> no. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> Kylie, Kylie was really struggling with uh, <laughs> finding where to put the gloves. <laughs> Which I slot? Thought, I thought there was a left glove and a right glove. So I put oh, no. You got two hands. <laughs> right, that makes, that makes well, it's placed that way, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so it was a good try. But they haven't let her live it down. <laughs> yeah. Also, shout out to my mods. They showed up. Um... <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and restock on some mana potions here. I am pretty broke, unfortunately. I did get a Rauron, which will help a little bit with survivability. Uh, but we'll be, we still need that, that Talath. So like I said, we might spend a little bit of time in the yeah. tower. Ugh. And gold, per usual, is being a little bit of a pain. So. Not a big deal. The weird thing about it, or, or the RNG aspect about it, is you can just find one thing. Oh, jeez. What? Fantastic. Wow. <laughs> this has been really nice. This just means we're going to get, like, the worst maps ever <laughs> later, right? I mean, we're just really, really going to be in trouble there. I'm just waiting for, like, clone after clone after clone on ball. Yep. For <laughs> sure. Um, so, a little bit about Diablo 2, maybe for some of you guys who haven't played Diablo 2 before. Uh, first off, if you haven't, I don't know why, but go get a copy and uh, do yourself the favor <laughs> of playing this amazing game. Um, but basically, you're playing a hero. I don't really know the lore too much because, I'm a, you know, I've only got 15,000 hours in this game or something. <laughs> but you're playing a hero and you run around and uh, you're trying to get to the end and chase some dude east, Diablo or something, kill him, and then there's, you know, his brother has got some, like, stone or, ah, you know, whatever. All, all those things. But essentially, it's an ARPG. Get your hero, collect items, level up, run out, kill stuff, 
uh, and speed run the game. <laughs> so that is about my knowledge of Diablo 2. <laughs> so it's pretty thorough, <laughs> most people would say. <laughs> but, you know, when you're speed running, you don't have time to read the text. So kind of uh, either jumped in and, and played multiplayer back in the day, where, once again, I also wasn't really reading the text, or I speed ran the game. So that's been my experience. But if you do a single player run through of this game, I guarantee you will have an absolute blast. Uh, and there is normal, nightmare, and hell difficulty. Uh, normal usually isn't too bad. It depends on the character and what all you're doing. Like I say, there will still be plenty of times where you can just die. Um, there might be a couple moments in this run where that happens. Uh, but beyond that, nightmare, things start to pick up a little bit. And then hell mode, they really just throw thing, make them make things go crazy as they add all these like double immunities and stuff to the game. Uh, and it can get really, really difficult. So the the ramps or the difficulty ramping in this game scales pretty hard. Which I think is always fun. It makes for a lot of really fun hell runs. And especially if you're running hardcore. And Ral Ith, so we don't have Tal or Eth yet. Um, if I get three Ith runes and three Neph runes, that would actually do a similar thing as I can morph those runes together later on. But we'll just have to see how that goes. It looks like we're going to run into skill shrines, which aren't a bad option either, as they will increase my damage here and help out a little bit with that. I'm going to go ahead and put the five points into strength that I need right now. Uh, this is purely going to be for getting a belt later on. Uh, since this belt that I'm currently using only has two slots, and the belt that I want to use will have three slots, or 12 slots versus uh, eight slots, you could say, if you want to count them all out. Um, so, yeah, if you want to do a couple more donations again, like I say, we're in the tower. We have $10 from Loki. Stay a while and listen. Such a cool run to see at GDQ. Good luck, Llama. And we actually saved him for once. So. <laughs> <laughs> it's got to be like first run in GDQ. First run ever that I've actually saved Kane prior to the end. You can keep going some if you'd like. We have $50 from TMS LFT. Stay a while and listen. Sir, this is a speed run. I know. I know. I'm sorry. What was I thinking? <laughs> We had a choice between save Kane and save the frames, and we chose Kane. Yeah. <laughs> we have $100 from Polynomial. Mr. Llama SC has joined our world. Diablo's minions grow weaker. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. Can I take that as my new hash or like slogan or something? <laughs> Diablo's minions grow weaker. Yeah. <laughs> I love that. So, level five again. Once again, really still hoping for that Tal S. Um, the reasoning for it, I suppose I should explain that for maybe people who don't play this game and are really confused. Uh, if you get specific runes and put them into socketed items in a specific order, they create um, unique, or I guess just rune words are what they're called, right? So it's a, a unique way that's beyond just what the runes give you. They give additional fun bonuses. Uh, okay, we got tier tell L, so we just need that F rune at this point. Halfway there. And this isn't bad that I'm leveling at all right now. Like, being level 11 down here is totally fine. Uh, once you get to about level 13, which these experience shrines are going to get wow. there. Uh, <laughs> once you get to level 13 is where the experience really starts to kind of fade out. So you see plenty of resets in Diablo 2 runs all the time from no runes. You see them from, I mean, just literally everything. Bad maps, bad shrines, didn't get whatever. Uh, and that's actually one of the unique things as well about this game is due to all of the RNG and all of the craziness that you're going to see, not every run is a world record run. So for instance, and that's also why you have such big ranges on times and stuff. So I could run 50 runs perfectly and still not get a run that has the RNG necessary to be a world record run. Is that a little bit frustrating sometimes? Yeah, sure. But at the same time, I think it brings in uh, kind of a new twist to speedrunning in the way of you have to be a little bit lucky. At the same time, you have to be good. And it's kind of when you can capitalize 
on that luck. So when you run into those situations where you get the really good maps and when you do all that stuff, you have to be ready and you have to be a good enough runner at those times and not make the mistakes then uh, for it to really matter. So a little bit different than a run where 99% of the time, if you play perfectly, you could get a world record or something like that. But that variety also is another reason that I think I really enjoy speeding in this game. And it's kind of kept me in speedrunning this game uh, simply because it's just so fun, right? It's just such a good time being able to constantly be thinking and exploring and, and adjusting how you're going to tackle a new situation uh, simply based on seeing something slightly different in the map and going, oh, this tile piece, you know, leads to a dead end generally, or this tile piece is going to lead me in this direction which is against the grain of the way I want to go. Whatever uh, pieces like that. So let's get that Ethrun. Bless RNG and chat. Come on, baby. Mm. Didn't pray hard enough. Come on. <laughs> it was close. It was Ed. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Got the L. Close enough, right? <laughs> if only. And what? we're just, we're just non-stop oh experience friends today. So, Teo, hey, you better watch out. <laughs> <laughs> so this one, this run I actually have the record on, uh, which is also oh. another fun thing. Uh, I, I mean, I'm coming from in plenty of other characters. Believe me. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, so that's the other fun thing is because you have normal runs, you have hell runs, you have seven different classes, you've got hardcore, you've got softcore, uh, it really opens up the running scene just in the way of constantly looking for different characters and records to go get um, and the, the fun that you can have with, you know, chasing all of those. So, like I say, with the Amazon, you know, the, this is completely different time. Otherwise, the issue would be everybody would only run the Sorceress and nothing else. Uh, and, I don't know, I think the game would get a lot more boring a lot quicker if we just did it like that. So the reason that you see me not run always the optimal direction when I'm running down here is because I'm trying to be exploring for these boss groups. Especially because I have this experience shrine. Um, that is just a really big factor for me. And I want to avoid this guy because he's cursed. So if he hits me, then I lose my shrine. Um, but getting that experience, like I said, it's still a balance. If I'm going to essentially be wasting my time down here, I might as well be getting experience as well so that when I move forward, it's not a big deal. So you don't check every nook and cranny, but you kind of poke your head around uh, different corners just to say, hey, is this somewhere that I you know, want to go? Do I want to go somewhere else? You know, is there a boss group in there or am I just going to leave it? And a lot of times you can tell just by kind of the lighting that you see on the screen. Uh, that gives you a pretty good indication. All right, chat, one more time. One more time. Let's go. Come on. Oh, jeez. Jeez. So now we're at that 13, which isn't fun. Uh, and now we're going to kind of get into a little bit of the time burner, like I'd rather be moving forward positions. Um, it is what it is. Welcome to Diablo 2 speedrunning. The fact that I have L runes is kind of crazy because L runes are awful, uh, to say the least. L runes are going, they're going to be an 8% chance to drop. Even though it's the first rune, uh, they actually kind of weighted the drop chances a little bit differently. And so Tau rune, for instance, is, is the highest chance rune to drop down there. And L rune is actually pretty low, uh, or the lowest, I should say. So getting three L runes and no Eth runes is about as unlucky as you get in that regard. But we'll run around here. And at this point, I'm going to definitely run a little bit more straightforward to the exits since I do have that level 13. Uh, if I get stuff along the way to fight, I'll fight it. I just realized I don't have my values set on my globes. There you go. Now you can see health and mana. Fun tip. You can click the bottom of those, and it'll uh, show the values. Another fun tip, stamina potions stack, 30 seconds a pop. So do thawing potions and antidote potions. Always a fun tip because so many people don't know that. And that's always like the most mind-blowing 
uh, change that they could ever witness in this game. All the cool stuff that they get to see. And when you go back to the comments, everybody's just talking about stamina potions. So, you know, it's really nice. If you want to read a couple more donations, go ahead. We have $75 from Tull. Had to donate during Diablo 2 with Mr. Alpaca. No, wait, Llama, never could tell the difference. <laughs> One of my favorite games of all time. Remember rushing home from school to play it with my friends. Yep. Thanks to all the runners and staff for an awesome event. Stay a while and listen. We have $10 from King Lovin. Although I cannot count how many hundreds of hours I spent as a teenager playing Diablo II Lord of Destruction, I've been waiting all week to see Mr. Llama SC put the pain on bail. We'll donate $50 so to see you take out the Cow King too. Nice. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, we will be, uh, we'll go after him. I mean, I'm going to be lightning, and he is lightning immune, so we might have to get a mercenary and do a little cheering for him. Oh, jeez. Wow. You got plenty of that fire immunity. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's great. Um, so the nice thing is we do have the Rao runes, which is going to make the later stages of this a little bit easier, and I can be a little bit more aggressive, which will be some time saves, um, simply because I can stand there and tank Venom Lords, things like that, a little bit better. It really is interesting and, and kind of crazy how much resistances can mean in a game like this. So if I'm just starting out and I'm running through and I don't have that fire res, I can get like one shot just by someone coming up and breathing fire on me. Doesn't happen to like act three, so you have a little bit of time to get there. But definitely at that point, having those spare Rao runes for that spare resistance uh, is pretty massive. Now, something you also might note is I'm trying to be very particular in how I'm throwing these javelins. The reason is because they'll leave behind a nice poison trail, but, ooh, that was really scary. Um, they'll leave behind a nice poison trail, and I want as many monsters to just walk through that as possible. So if I throw it directly at a single monster in front, he's going to get that tanked, and then nobody else is really going to get hit unless they're all kind of walking through. Uh, so a lot of times it's a little bit better to throw just to the side, kind of get a miss, and then you get a full javelin's length. Um, and then at that point, you can feel a little bit better about it because everything is just going to turn over and walk right into it, uh, and that just helps a ton. Or just going past the monsters and then throwing at that point also works. So Ethrun sure would be nice right now. And there's actually a boss group in here as well. And so it's being annoying there. Please, game, please. Oh, it just does not like us. It just does not like us. Uh, so this is one of those runes that are, like if it was a Rao rune, I'd skip it. If it was tier runes, I'd skip it. There are a lot of runes that I would just not care about at all in this regard. Um, the Tal and the Eth rune, are just pretty darn important, unfortunately. Uh, the big issue being um, there's faster hit recovery associated, there's faster run walk associated. There isn't faster cast rate, really, since, I mean, there is on it, but I'm an Amazon, so I don't care too much about that. But the other pieces are pretty important to the run and will be there for a decent time of the run, so it kind of makes sense uh, to go and get them. I'm still getting slight experience down here, so you can still, me, still see me kind of leveling up. Um, but, you know, like I say, this is, this is not our ideal tower run. And this is always one of those, like, awful things that you could have happen. You could get a run where you get experience shrine, experience shrine, experience shrine, no eth rune, and then, you know, if we were going for world record, like, we would have reset at this point. Um, this run actually has a record that I think still has a little bit of room on it since Amazon's run a little bit less than the other characters. Uh, so I was hoping maybe we could have had a chance today for it, but I don't think we're going to quite be at that, which is okay. Not too big of a deal. So let's try coming in from the other side. <laughs> for sure, that's going to change up how this works. <laughs> Come on, Ethrin. Dear Diablo. Please. Brutal. So, 14. 
you know, it's fun. <laughs> Still more experience to be had right here. Um, it's cut down for sure, but it does exist. I, I can say that at least. Uh, <laughs> you can take it up to... I, I've gone until 15, I think, before in a run like this. Um, when I was doing like a race. And it still ended up working out as the run went on later on. So just because we, we've uh, hit a little bit of a dry spot in terms of runes here with this, um, we're going to lose a little time. But hopefully we get it in this run, maybe next run, anything, you know, <laughs> today, whatever it ends up being. If we get to 15, we might just turn this into a stealthless run, and it'll just be really weird. Uh, but that might just be our our way to go at that point, because I'm not sure at 15 we want to spend much more time burning around in here. Maybe we could find an Ethrun later on in the run. Uh, it's one of those things where you just, you know, you got to play the odds, right? And And the odds aren't great later, but... Uh, we can only be down here for so long. Let's feel the love, guys. F, Woo! F, <laughs> F, 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 please. F. Come on, We're begging please. Of you. That's all we want. <laughs> oh. <Aww>. <laughs> Not <laughs> even a Neph rune. This is the, like, insane thing. <laughs> Look at how many runes we have. Good day. Oh, my gosh. I mean, we just... Uh, get, you know, I'll do two tiers, I guess. Trash, 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 trash. Trash that, trash that. We've already got our two Rao runes. We don't really need it. Trash, trash, trash. Wow. Oops. Oh, that's fine, actually. Well, this is fun. How are you guys doing? <laughs> Let's have a nice chat. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! Woo! <laughs> If you want to read a couple more donations, you go right ahead. I'm thinking all those experience shrines messed up your RNG. Yeah, it probably did. This is not good. Nope. <laughs> we have $10 from Winky Potamus. It's a pleasure to watch my favorite streamer absolutely crushing Diablo for a good cause. Mr. Llama is such a great person and amazing runner. Wow, thank you very much. We have $10 from Kenty. Mr. Llama, check. Diablo 2, check. Chain mail, check. Nope. All I needed for this afternoon's entertainment. <laughs> Always great to see Mr. Llama running and chatting. Fantastic atmosphere. And I gotta, I gotta give a shout out just to the Diablo community as a whole. All the streamers, viewers, watchers, I guess viewers and watchers, same thing. Uh, <laughs> moderators, whatnot. I really, uh, I think it's one of the best communities on Twitch. Um, you know, take that, other communities. Uh, I really just love all the people there. It's super friendly, super positive. Everybody makes it such a joy to run. Um, and, yeah, so just big shout-out to all of them. I really do appreciate it. And just love, you know, that's, that's my favorite part of running this game is the community. Is there any Discord by any chance that any we could join? Uh, I've got a Discord. So that's in my channel. Nice. Exclamation mark Discord. It's got a decent, decent number of Diablo fans in it. So once we get this Eth rune right now, odds only say it's going to, you know, chances increase, right? <laughs> so this has to be it. Uh -huh. All right. Who likes stealthless runs? Let's try it. <laughs> A marathon first, or a run first. Uh, so we're going to be a little slow as this run goes on, and this is going to be a little bit different. Chance for death has just increased, um, as I will not be gaining the faster run walk. But at the same time, it's one of those, like I say, we can only burn so much time down there before we just, you know, we can't keep doing it, right? At, at that point... Uh, the experience gain is starting to get minimal as we start out-leveling those monsters by too much. So moving forward is really the option, in my mind. That is the way to handle it. 
that we had a door right there. So I'm just going to continue to try reading maps at this point, and uh, going to try and really move forward since we did get a lot of experience. If I run into kind of a for sure boss group, like champions right in front of me, I'll go ahead and launch a poison jab at them. Otherwise, it's just going to be a run. Hopefully the maps aren't too long. Hopefully they aren't too trolly. Uh, but we'll just kind of have to see how it goes. This is the fun of Diablo 2. And uh, fun is very loose right there. But it happens, you know. Like I say, this is this is probably my, I think this is my first uh, GDQ run where I haven't gotten the runes that I've needed. So I've probably been luckier in that regard than unlucky, but I still get to complain about it, right? Something like that. Um, yeah, Funk, you want to talk a little bit about your Diablo 1 speedruns and maybe some differences between that and Diablo 2? Well, I can tell you a similarity. Sure. With, uh, without the stealth, you're about as fast as we go walking. <laughs> <laughs> Actually true. Makes me really sad. <laughs> yeah, sadly in D1 we don't have rune words, which is a nice um, change in D2. Yeah. Um, that was added with the expansion, was it? Or Correct. Okay. I believe that was 10... 109? Oh, they, already a patch around, into it then. Somewhere around there. Or that's when they just added, they changed a bunch of stuff up kind of around there. 110. They added a bunch of new rune words and stuff. I forget how my patches all go. It's all, it's all a blur. But yeah, so they added rune words maybe right in with it, like just the base ones. And then they added a bunch of new rune words as they went along, including some of the really strong ones like Enigma. And that came in the later stuff. Uh, which added teleport to the game for all characters as opposed to just the sorceress or just characters with a uh, staff with charges on it or ring or amulet, I should say. So, yeah, that was, a, that was definitely a change there. But rune words in general are very nice, and it's one of the things where in a game full of RNG, at least everybody can get the rune words. Unless you're running at GDQ, and then, <laughs> then you don't get them. Um, but you know, it's one of those. At least everybody has that, and so it's kind of a nice balancing act, which is why uh, Diablo 2 Classic speedrunning hasn't really taken off, I would say, because all of the breakpoints. Since this game is 25 FPS, everything is built on 25 FPS. So if I want to speed up my character and her just attacks, how quickly she attacks. It doesn't just happen with plus one attack speed. Rather, it's going to be increasing only at the every, you know, when you can knock a frame off. And so there's different breakpoints for all the cast rate, for all of the hit recovery, for the IS, everything like that. Um, and so it's constantly changing around based on, you know, your gear and things of that nature. So by having those consistencies, it makes it a little bit better, but at the same time, uh, you can still run into issues like this, where you just don't get those runes. And now, you know, you're in a different situation of, how do I deal with this? And uh, constantly just having to improvise. That is the fun of Diablo 2. Constant improvisation. So we actually had an OK level 1 and level 2. Um, the catacombs are one of those maps where you just have to know all of the tile pieces, but you have no indication in level 1 and 3 on what direction you need to run. So you kind of have to guess and then just run into tile pieces and go, is this one that's going to dead end or not? If it's not, I'll keep going. If it is, I'll turn around. Uh, and that's about all, of, all that you get from that. So a lot of runs, I would also say, kind of get lost around there, uh, which can kind of stink if you're on like a really good pace and then you run into that and it suddenly turns into, well, you know, now we just have to deal with this time loss or go for the reset if need be. So that attack right there with the when she releases the poison clouds, that is her worst attack. Um, and by worst, I mean her, her best attack, my least favorite of it, uh, simply because it does so much damage when it hits. So hopefully it doesn't hit too much. Oh, and I don't actually have power strike enabled on my swap. That'll help. 
So I'm gonna be pumping through some rejuice here and mana. And eventually we will be getting out of act one. So there's not a lot of clapping moments in this game, so you can clap at bosses. <laughs> and... <laughs> All right. <laughs> <laughs> and if we find an Ethrin later on, y'all better go nuts. <laughs> <laughs> That's all I'm gonna say. Yeah, unfortunately, like I said, there really is not. Just, I mean, th this game doesn't have, you know, any cool skips or glitches. Or, I mean, it's got a couple like tiny ones, but it doesn't have a lot of uh, stuff like that. Rather, it is just you playing the game very skillfully. Uh, and that is about all you get. I will take this belt, and I will go ahead and grab these gloves as well. So chance to cast Frost Nova is actually really superb. Uh, it's a little expensive, but with 5,000 runes, we have tons of money. And I'll actually put some money away. So it's it's going to be nice. And I'm going to actually look for a helmet as well, two open sockets and or shield. Um, just something of that nature for either of these. Nothing there, nothing there. Uh, we'll just kind of check in on those as we go because these tier runes and these row runes uh, can give us some resistances, can give us some mana per kill. And so that can just help us sustain a little bit so we might not have to come back to town near as often. So at this point, we're in Act 2. The goal of Act 2 is to go out, collect the cube, collect a staff, collect an amulet, morph the staff and the amulet into a bigger staff, uh, and then take that bigger staff Put it in the orifice, uh, and then try and kill the boss. Um, there's a lot of trolley maps in here as well. I would say this is people. Generally, people have less favor for this act um, overall, simply because you can run into maps like the Maggot Lair. You have to go through the Maggot Lair, uh, which is just this very tight which is not good for an Amazon who's looking for spread and launching these javelins. That's nice that we found that pretty quick. Um, so, so it's very like tight corridors, and you're trying to just run through there um, and not kill very much. But if you get really bad maps, it can just lead to a lot of pain. So hopefully we don't get too bad of maps there. In both of my practice runs, I had two of the worst maps I've ever seen in the Maggot Lair. So I'm really hoping that we just like got rid of all that bad RNG, because that's how it works. Certain classes also have a harder time than others. For example, the assassin has a brutal time due to how traps work. Yep. Yeah, and that's also a good point for when we get into the Arcane Sanctuary, which is another magical zone where you end up in the center of a the space. There's four exits, run, one running in each direction, and it's random which direction you have to go. So, you know, another really fun spot where you can gain or lose a ton of time based on that. But on each of those paths, there's different uh, sorts of routes, and some of them have, like, stairs and stuff. And traps just don't work on stairs. So if you're on an assassin, getting caught with a, a, a run with a lot of monsters on stairs can just be absolutely detrimental and just totally destroy a run just about. Uh, simply because you'll just be sitting there for so long trying to get them off of those or trying to kill them on there and the traps just barely work. It can be pretty messy. So that's definitely uh, another thing that can sometimes be detrimental for some of these characters is they just run into situations that don't always um, fit how the character, you know, you're trying to play it. And so it gets a little sloppy. So I'm not getting a ton of experience down here, which is why I'm not worrying too much. Generally, you want to be about level 13 and a half. You could maybe be 14 to get some experience down here. This is going to be my death, most likely. Oh! <laughs> it's one of those fun situations. Uh, it's not over yet. <laughs> he has to go back in. We have to go back in still. Um, the nice thing is I can at least be a little more prepped this time for getting that TP off. And we'll do that. Hopefully get an area that's a little bit better. And clear out a little bit. Oh, he's also lightning enchanted, so that's really nice. <laughs> so that right there is why... Uh, 
chance to cast Frost Nova is one of my favorite things ever. Because when you have that chance to cast Frost Nova, especially if it's you, you double have it, it can just put you in situations where you're about to die, and then that Frost Nova goes off and gives you just that tiny split second of time uh, to continue forward and be doing all right with it. So go ahead and head back right here. And we've got the cubes. So that's the first piece. If I had Nephrons at all, which somehow in that magical journey through the tower, we found zero Nephrons, uh, I could morph those three Nephrons into an Ethrun. Um, but like I said, this, this game really did not want us to have a chance at that at all. And I don't believe we can get an Ethrun until after this area anyways. So it's one of those, um, when we're out of town portals, we should remember that. Couch. <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> no, just for the future. Remember and, that in case I forget. In D1, there's no tome for town portals or scrolls. So we usually just count the scrolls we have. I'm not used to the little tome on the inventory yep. screen. Yep. Little, little bit different there. And I mean, there's also a skill for it, right? In Diablo 1? <laughs> yeah. You yep. can just always cast it. That'd be really nice. So pretty good exit coming out of the far oasis right here. Um, I still need a waypoint as, once again, I did that forward back strat, as I like to call it, where we just set that up and then we're going to run forward and then go backwards through it. Um, so I want to find a waypoint right here. If I find the exit, I'll probably just uh, run around a little bit more trying to find. And so I should at least check up here for the exit just to see. We can also kill this guy. I am overburdened. See if it turns off. It does not. OK. So this is the only map where you can get a turn off immediately when you enter in Act 2. All the other ones, I guess the Rocky Waste as well. but. Uh, whenever you're in far oasis or dry hills or anything, you're always going to at least run one distance. And we do run into the waypoint, so that's helpful. Let's get some wa some TPs just in case. And you might say, oh no, she doesn't have TPs. That's okay. You can just sell and rebuy it back at max quantity. What? You just learned something new about Diablo 2. <laughs> it's crazy. 18-year-old game. Um, yeah. Sam Maggots. And here's, here's the fun of the Maggot Lair, everybody's favorite level. Whoever designed this, just, I can't I, carry anymore. just that's all, I, I, I can just shake my head. <laughs> Why, you know? <laughs> we all ask. And the I worst ask for the collective. <laughs> the worst part is the most of these guys are lightning mobs, which just make it so much worse. Yep. So the beetles are actually nice in the way of they give good experience. But they're awful in the way of they kill you a lot. <laughs> so, and especially when you get to Nightmare and Hell mode, um, there's some bugs in this game that aren't in your favor at all. In which case, uh, you'll see resist or uh, immunities like an lightning enchant, fire enchant, things like that stack and then react in weird ways. So for instance, with lightning enchant mobs, uh, such as like beetles, if they are fire enchanted, they will release their lightning bolts when you hit them. And then those lightning bolts will have fire enchant explosions around them, which do way too much damage, especially in Nightmare, because that didn't get fixed. Uh, they fixed it in Hell, but not a Nightmare for fire enchant. So you run into situations where you'll be just be chilling, having a grand old time, talking to your mom, whatever. <laughs> taking, you know, 20, 30 damage a bolt, and then all of a sudden you'll take 300 damage from bolts uh, from a fire enchant boss group, and your hardcore character is dead. So it's really fun, um, and a, a great way to end a nice world record pace run, for sure. I bet your man versus stream loves that. Gets you to drop all your fire resist beforehand. <laughs> yeah. Well, the problem is having good fire resist doesn't really even help that much oh. at that point. The explosions are so much damage that you can just be sitting there with good fire resist because it's based off of uh, 
like when the when the fire enchant is based off for the the final explosion is based off like HP. Mm. So if you have like Lister the Tormentor, who's the big boss at the very end of um, like Bale, right before you fight Bale, if he's fire enchanted and explodes, you can be like a max resistance uh, druid, you know, with with cyclone armor or something, and he can just still one shot you from like 500 HP or something. So you have to be very careful and very aware in situations like that. But the uh, the beetles are, are what I hate a little more with it, because sometimes you don't even see them, and then that's it. And we've picked up just the wonderful maps of the Maggot Lair. So enjoy the tour, everybody. <laughs> uh, so one of the things that I know down here, why it might look a little strange in the direction that I'm running, is I know that I need to go to the right of the way that I've come in. So, for instance, I've come in and, and my, my exit is heading towards the top right. So I need to go towards the bottom right direction. Unfortunately, um, sometimes it's really far up and over. Sometimes it's really far down and over. Sometimes it's directly over. Sometimes it's back, down, and then over. You get all sorts of fun, interesting ways to learn your directions when playing this game. So we're going to continue to the right here. Hopefully it's not too bad. I'll definitely have to go back for more potions just based on how all this has been going. But if you want to read a couple donations, feel free as a... Uh, we have a little time here. We have $50 from Athena229. So glad I could catch Llama's run at this AGDQ. Another $25 if he gets first Arcane Way. Ooh. <laughs> We have $10 from Xeros. Hi, Llama. Hi, Kylie. Please don't Hello. fourth way. I'll donate 10 more if you first way. <laughs> Man. Uh, too much pressure for first way now. I'm voting for fifth. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the problem is, on the Amazon, like you can sometimes actually fifth way if you get caught in horrible <laughs> situations. That's generally more during hardcore runs, though, where you have to quit out if you get caught in a bad situation. Whereas here, I can just drop a town portal. So really fun maps. They're doing really fun things for us today. Uh, Good to see you. Hey, Llama. Yeah, what's up? Do you have town portal scrolls? I do. <laughs> okay. Just Thank making you. sure. No, I appreciate it. <laughs> it's good stuff. Uh, yeah, we'll get rid of all those. I had extras. Oops. <laughs> yeah, we'll sell it. OK. So what's that time that we set on this run again? Did we? <laughs> <laughs> what's the leeway that we have? <laughs> so this is kind of the crazy thing. And uh, I, I talked about it a little bit during my Sorceress run uh, that I did for the GDQ Hotfix, which I did a Nightmare Sorceress run there, which is pretty fun. But one of the fun, crazy, oh uh, yeah, so it is one of those around and up maps. Uh, one of the fun, crazy things is how much variance you can really have in these times. So for instance, um, in the run, I actually want to repair really fast. In the uh, Sorceress normal run, somebody did a theoretical run. Now remember, this is theoretical. People lose their mind over it because they're like, that would never happen. Yeah, it's theory. Um, but basically it is, all potential, like, if odds worked out perfectly every time in your favor, uh, sort of run, right? And, and so it's all technically possible, but it would just never actually happen. Like, the chances of winning the lottery are probably, you know, 10,000 times better at least, rather than this run actually happening. So the normal run world record right now is an hour, 10 minutes, and, like, 45, 59, something around there. Um, it actually moved down recently, which is pretty crazy, and the strats in it are absolutely ridiculous. Uh, but before that, or, or before that, when, when this theoretical run came out, I mean, the record was 112, but this theoretical run ran in about 22 minutes. So that right there, and that was still run manually by a person. They just beefed everything up so that, you know, immediately they could get all the drops they wanted and experience shrines wherever where they needed and stuff. And uh, it was pretty crazy to just see, like, 
how much variance there can be and how much RNG. And even then, that still wasn't perfect. There were still changes that we got to the end and went, oh, we could have done this, this, and this to speed it up. Uh, so 22 minutes is, you know, our effective Taz, right, almost. Um, and the fastest anybody's ever run is an hour 10. So we're not even close. Uh, but that just kind of goes to show the insane variance that you can have on it. Um, and I think that makes it really fun because there always is a lot of that potential for, you know, oh, well, maybe we can get this. Maybe we can get a little more. Is there any area in particular that you think there's a lot of time to be saved on? Um, in which character would you say? Well, since we're talking about Amazon right now. Amazon. <laughs> uh, so, so for the Amazon, um, I'd say the, the place that you're really going to be looking for that is going to be in those earlier stages. So exactly opposite of what's happened during this run. OK. Um, I think the potential uh, really lies in the early stages simply because you have that um, chance to just get Taleth on your first drop, right? And so if you get Taleth on your first drop, you saw that I was able to push forward with my Poison Javelins. Mm -hmm. And because I have it's such a good skill, I can essentially push forward and always be in an okay position. And essentially, the higher up monsters you kill until a certain degree, the more experience you're going to gain, right? This game actually has a cap on that. So if you kill stuff that's too high of level, you'll actually not get experience. You'll get a penalty in the reverse direction. But um, there is that bit to it, at least. And so it ends up being a little bit uh, strange in that guard. But you can move forward. Let's say you get a first run or second run Tal Ethrune kicking off of that immediately um, and heading forward with that and maybe getting a good experience shrine can get you in a much faster position and then you're just kind of trying to play to the rest of the run in a better position. So I think the Amazon has a lot uh, in that regard and just like the now Sorceress has, which is a single run, Tal Leth move forward, um, she might be in the same boat where you might not even get the Black Marsh Waypoint. You might play until, you know, resets until you get Taleth on the first run. And is it a few resets? Yeah. But once you get that, it can just be really, really great. You can kick off a really good run, uh, and you're not wasting all that time down in the tower, which is something that we've, like I said, kind of been exploring more and more as we've become better runners and as the times have gotten lower and lower. So in the past, it was like you always ran to level 13 down in that tower for most every character, um, with a couple exceptions. But for the most part, you were running to 13 simply because you, you know, getting that experience was safe and it was the thing to do. And then since then, we've gone, hmm, what if we challenged that thought actually and didn't do that, but instead just push forward and try to be better players uh, in more difficult situations? And that's actually started to work out a little bit more. So I'd say that's going to be the next year of Diablo 2 speedrunning is going to be running into those situations that are a little bit more rare um, and you're going to have to reset a little bit more, but have that potential to turn into really great runs. Fair. And we run into another bad map. Uh, I'm going to look and see if it's a wrap around, run backwards, then turn sort of map here. So the concept of like three rights make a left exists in this game. Correct. <laughs> so that's what I'm checking for right now. Because at this way, I wanted to go left of the way I came in. Ugh, why not us? <laughs> I wanted to go left of the way that I came in. And that was not where it took us. So we're going to see if it's all the way down and around. That's a dead end in there. Hopefully, this is it over here. This is a really meh area, as you're constantly... There's a lot of doorways, and there's a lot of snakes just constantly charging you. So it gets a little annoying. And this looks like it is going to turn off, and I'm guessing is going to be where we need to go. Yep. So... Whew, those experience shines really 
really hurt us later on with these maps, huh? RNG comes back to bite you one way or the other. So I'm also level 17 at this point. So that's kind of, you know, once again, that point that I would normally have stealth rune, uh, or have my stealth rune word, and my character would kind of become, you know, slightly more immortal because she'd be really mobile. I am <laughs> but, uh, you know, at this point, we don't have that. So we're just going to continue without it. Like I said, we've got resistances. <laughs> That's really nice. And we got the pieces, so we're going to get out of Act 2. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> we'll see how the Arcane Sanctuary goes, I guess, right? Let there be light. Some boots. More fire res I don't really need. Probably could have used that am amulet if I really wanted to. We'll just use that one, whatever. And I actually want to change that out and go there. Okay, so we'll repair our jabs and then continue forward. And so once again, the Arcane Sanctuary, the, the rough parts are the way that the uh, lanes are played out or laid out um, okay. is you, you run into a couple of zones that you just don't really, or paths that you really don't want to take. So that first way down the best path is always your ideal situation. Uh, in our case, we're going to want to probably try and find that the uh, flat path as stairs also don't do super well for the Amazon. So leading up to this, I want chat to start guessing which path and how, basically how many paths it will take Llama here to get through there. That's right. <coughs> One, two, three, three. four. <laughs> I guess you could throw a five in there if you really want. Let's pray not. I'm spamming five in my heart. And six if you've already pre-ordered Diablo Immortal. <laughs> oh boy, that is danger. <laughs> so as we go through a little bit of this fun, if you want to read a couple more donations, go ahead. We have $50 from Aussie Drop. Hi, Mr. Camel and Couch. I see you got the chainmail into HDQ once more. Could you explain the story behind it once more? Donation goes to Mr. Camel's and Miss Kylie's choice. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so the chain mail comes back to a, a much dumber time. Uh, when I was first starting streaming, I thought to myself, wow, if you have a stream, you have to have a story to go with that, because that's the only way that you can stream. And so I said, all right, if I'm going to have a story, I need to come up with something good. So I came up with this entire background story about how I was a llama farmer and uh, some king stole my llamas because they were suddenly like worth a ton or something. And I had to go chase down this king or like I tried to get like get people to fight back, but nobody would. So I was like, I'm going to do it myself. So it's about the story of a farmer turning into a knight and uh, it's just so dumb. <laughs> but <laughs> the story didn't keep, but the chain mail has. <laughs> so I always thought have it was because mail. you didn't have enough gold for the potions at Ball. <laughs> yeah. Also, also true. Oh, yeah. Good old, good old days. <laughs> Maybe we'll bring back story time one day to our stream. Maybe. So, uh, yeah, if you want to make a couple more donations, this is just running through. We're, we're about halfway through the first way. And uh, a first or second way, you can clap. A third or fourth way, y'all can boo. But <laughs> boo Diablo. You know, not, not me, just Diablo. <laughs> we have $35 from Missy. Hey, Llama. Almost didn't recognize you without the oven mitts and sky goggles. <laughs> Thank you. So uh, once a month, I do a fun stream where I try and beat the game on hell, and it's got all sorts of crazy challenges and things, uh, including uh, oven mitts and ski goggles and all sorts of things of that nature. So the reason I'm actually running through here is I want to pop these chests, because these chests can have runes in them. And y'all know we need runes. So not first way. 
But second way for uh -huh. sure, right? There's no way we could have that bad of luck. Hopefully. Uh, we'll get a quick restock on potions here. Greetings. I maybe could have kept that if I wanted. It had weakened charges, which I could have used on Bale later. Um, so like I said, that's the best path, as that is the just straight path. Uh, it's It's just flat. You don't have to worry about any of these weird stairs or portals or anything like that. No twisty turns. Um, so a lot harder to get trapped in difficult situations. Now we're getting on to the paths that are slightly less desired. And that top right path is the path I, I really don't want to take that much because it's got stairs on it and they're just not a lot of fun at all. So I'm going to try and skip as much or as many of these monsters as I can right here. Um, but I have to also be careful because there is the potential that I run into uh, blocks, essentially. So monsters could get behind me, such as these ghosts trying to come in here, and then block me in, and then everything from the front and back are attacking me, and it you know, just leads to a death. So you have to be very careful with that stuff. And the other issue is uh, these poison jabs don't travel very well across stairs. So it's very difficult, or across gaps, I should say, as well. So it's very difficult to try and make sure you're getting good uh, poison spread across everything when dealing with this. So these Frost Nova charges are actually really nice because they're going to allow me to slow up a lot of the um, minions enough or demons here that I can hopefully get past. And this is one of those situations where you can sometimes get caught. Looks like we're not going to get caught there. <sighs> when it rains, it pours, right? <laughs> to the third way we go. I guess I could have popped his chest it's as well. getting closer. <laughs> no fifth way. <laughs> Please, no. So we actually have level 18 already, which is not supposed to happen. I should be level 17, like right at Duriel. So we're already, you know, a little bit over leveled. This is once again just going to be a point of... Uh, I'm going to try and get to 20 and then not go any higher. So early to 20 isn't horrible. I want to get 20 usually right around when I'm getting to the Travancore. That is a lot of stuff. I do love the sound of poison hitting monsters, though, if I must say so. But yeah, continuing on the third way here. If you want to read some more donations, uh, go ahead. We have $5 from Winter244. Woke up bright and early to see an awesome runner running the game with the most replay value ever. Lil Clan from US West Hardcore Ladder is with you, Llama. Thank you so much. And yeah, shout out to everybody who did wake up. Because I barely woke up. I still Am I awake yet? <laughs> Maybe. I'm like half and half right now. I don't know. I don't think I woke up. Nah. This is... Uh, Quite different than my normal 1 p.m. wake up time, right? <laughs> <laughs> so we deal with it. The things we do for love? Is that right? <laughs> <laughs> or Diablo, one of the two. We have All right. <laughs> oh, sorry. We have a third way. So let's get those boos. Boo! <laughs> <laughs> there we go. That's what happened, game. People boo you. <laughs> Fix it. Even he's laughing at you. <laughs> he knows. He knows. Maybe he'll give us an F thrown out of pity. Nope. Oh. <laughs> Somebody has to pity us, right? <laughs> Somebody has the F hiding. The other issue is I don't I'm not always able going to see the 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 deaths and item drops of every monster here. So that can be a little bit annoying as uh, sometimes, you know, we might have already dropped an Ethrune, but I'm not going to stand around and wait for every single monster to drop gear. So that puts us in kind of rough spots. But hopefully down here there are okay chances. Ghosts also have slightly better rune drop chances. So... 
We're kind of preying on the ghosts right now. <laughs> Brutal. Don't like that cold. So Duriel's kind of a sloppy fight a little bit. Um, reason being is he has cold attacks, but he also has a Holy Freeze aura. So there's no way to actually not get chilled by his frozen aura. Um, there's, there's freeze and chill in this game, essentially two different mechanics. Uh, so when you have cannot be frozen, it prevents the cold attacks from doing that to you, but it will not prevent the uh, Holy Freeze aura, and nothing will no matter what. So that's definitely a little bit annoying, I would say. And when you're in a character of this form and you're constantly trying to like melee him and stuff, uh, it just turns into a really sloppy, you know, slow number of attacks trying to just do anything. Um, we'll see how it goes. Hopefully we get it and don't run into a dead end. <laughs> oh boy. I'm really hoping that the path down here is going to turn off that way and lead us to it. If not, then we're going to have a decent backtrack. Uh, and it'll be one of those bunch of turns before we can actually get the correct way there. So if you want to read a couple more donations, we ran into a dead end. <laughs> Jeez. We have $50 from No Chance. Hi, Mr. Llama. No chance here. Wish you the best RNG run ever. Get us a world record. Shout out to your mod. I don't know if world record's in sight anymore. How about let's get under time? Uh, <laughs> not 30 minutes over. We believe in you, Llama. <laughs> Still don't have stealth. Let's see how this goes. Ah, no mana potion still. Ah, there's one. We'll grab it. So hopefully it's just a quick up and turn uh, and not another down, back and around. This really has just been a nightmare of maps so far. Um, but we're only in normal difficulty. Oh, jeez. <laughs> <laughs> oh, All right. So that's going to kick us out to the right. So... I still might have to come back this way, but once again, this is another one of those playing our odds. Uh, I'm going to try and go for the down and around simply because it's slightly better uh, chances that it's going to do this. And there it is. So, hey. Yay. You got Woo! it. <laughs> Clap for the map. <laughs> We're doing it. Fun. I have to get my cube as well. Remind me about that. <laughs> get the cube. Thank you. <laughs> hey, Llama. Yeah? Do you have your cube? <laughs> I, I, I don't. I'll go get it now. Thanks. We'll actually get our thawing potions as well. So what Llama did earlier with the stamina potions, he can do with the thawing potions here for Duriel. Right. So we'll get our cube. I'm going to chug this. So now I have three minutes of 50 cold res. So it's going to help a little bit with Duriel. I still have to be very careful, like I say, because I have cold attacks plus his Holy Freeze aura, so I am very slow. I also don't have a stealth armor, so getting away is even harder. But I'm going to try and do uh, kind of dodging in and out, and this is, this is a little bit of a strategy that we've just, I don't know, worked on a little bit more lately, uh, where you try and get him to hit you, because Essentially, when you're up next to him, he's going to be stunning you and doing all of this stuff. But when he's away from you like that, you get this tiny moment where you're not going to be uh, stunned by him. Or you're, you're not going to be frozen by his aura. And in that moment, you can actually do some stuff. And so I can run in, and then before the aura procs, because the, the auras kind of propagate out. They're not just a standard. It's always within you know, this distance. Uh, 
it kind of has a range where it like propagates out, and I think it does it on a certain time. And let's just be a little careful. And so I want to constantly be trying to dip in and out, and it's a lot harder without stealth. Um, but just trying to get him to miss so I can get a little bit of distance, which without stealth is really just getting tough. Let's go get more health pots really fast. And maybe a couple more thongs, just in case. One thing that might not be shown is this is actually really, really hard. As someone who speedruns D1 and tried to pick this game up, I couldn't, I couldn't like imagine how hard it is for somebody who's newer to pick this game as well. Because even for me, I gave up. It was too difficult. <laughs> yeah, I used to die to Duriel constantly when I played this game. <laughs> yeah, Duriel is one of the uh, pain points of this game for sure. And the biggest reason is you're trapped in this tiny room, so you have very little uh, room to move. He does a ton of damage. He slows you, he chills you, uh, all of this Ooh. right here. And so it's, it, it just, it's just a, a horrible nightmare. And most characters, um, if you, especially if you don't speedrun or don't know, you know, certain tricks or tips or ways to kind of deal with him can just be absolutely brutal. All right. Woo! <laughs> Ooh, that was hard. Yeah. Getting low on that health. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and so often you're also running, when you're speedrunning and fighting Duro, you're running extremely low health, um, as the health pots just don't regen very quickly. Light healing potions aren't super great. And so it just puts you in these weird situations where you're just like, uh, I got 60 health, let me just regen a tiny bit more. Okay, now I'll go forward and whatnot. So I also still want to pick up a two open socket shield or helmet. I actually want to get some stamina as well. So I'm going to go ahead and do a check once I get to act three, just really quickly. And this is another fun little tip. Once you talk there, you can just come in here, drop a TP, and get right over to Mishif. So, if you're looking to save a few seconds of running across town, there you go. That's something. So, like I say, I want to get these two open sockets just for the tier runs. The tier runs would have been nicer earlier for sure. Um, but, you. you know, we're just going to try and I'll shop a couple times. So, if you want to do a couple more donations, go ahead. We have an anonymous $50 donation. Had to donate during Mr. Llama's run. Good luck to all the runners. Thank you. We have $25 from Bigger Mac. Had to donate for my first time during Diablo 2. Spent many hours playing and love to see all the strats that I could have used as a kid. <laughs> right. We have $55 from Ares89. Nice to see Diablo 2 again on the screen. I still have flashbacks to the Arcane Sanctuary, but nevertheless a very entertaining run. Keep going and best of luck. Yeah, the Arcane Sanctuary is definitely a pain point for many, I would say. Not so, as bad as not finding the right rune, though. Yeah, not as bad as not finding Eth rune. Um, that is true. I'd rather a fifth wade. It is what it is. Uh, so one of the, as much as people hate Act 2, I'd, see, I'd say Act 3 is hated a little bit more, unless you're playing on multiplayer being rushed, because then you can just skip all of this. So in Act 3, I now have to find the eye, the heart, and the brain, morph all of those together in the cube to get the flail, and then use the flail to break the orb at the Travancle. So it's kind of a long process, um, but you can just completely skip it, like I said, whereas in Act 2, you can't skip those pieces. In Act 3, you can just skip all of that, just go right to the Travancle, or right to Durance, and then just be done with it from there. So online, it's not too bad, but when you are playing single player, it is pretty miserably slow as these jungles can just be a nightmare. So one thing, more RNG, uh, is the, the way the maps connect don't always even connect the same way. So for instance, the maps in uh, the right out here that's connecting to the spider forest can either be the Great Marsh and the Flare Jungle or just the Great Marsh. Um, 
I don't care about the Great Marsh, so I'm always looking to just get right into the Flare Jungle if I can, and that's when you get better RNG. But you don't always know if you have that skip or not until you're already kind of at that point. And I want to check over here really fast to see if this is turning off. This is. So you're constantly trying to explore and figure out. And since, for instance, that's the Great Marsh right there. So we know we have the Great Marsh right there. Now we're going to go check and see if we're going to get a Flare Jungle skip going forward. And I still have to find the piece down here anyways, so I need to be moving uh, through the Spider Forest. But that's just one of the, oh, geez, this isn't fun. OK. Once again, when you get caught on bridges and things of that nature, it really just gets a little bit more tough. And I do have my 19, so I could respec around now if I wanted. But I really just like the poison damage out here. I find that uh, just throwing, you could, oh, y'all go crazy now. This is, yeah. This is <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> I am immortal! <laughs> Woo! Let's go! Ah, yeah. All right. Chat is going nuts right now. <laughs> <laughs> Good job, chat. You did it. You did it, chat. Uh, yeah. So, like I say, sometimes you can luck into it as you go along in the run. Um, I feel like it's similar odds, actually. You have maybe about a 30% chance, 20 30% chance of finding that eth rune later on as you're running. But once again, you miss runes so often while you're here that it kind of makes you go, ah, eh, will I? Or, you know, just because I'm running past things before they die. So that was uh, very nice right there. We got the eth rune. Now we can speed up a tiny bit. The bad news is, it doesn't look like we're going to have a skip, nor do we have a great map for getting to the skip, unless this is going to kick out right up here. It is not. Sometimes you get weird connections between the maps um, in those like tight little areas there. And they're, they're, they're ones that you would never look for until you started speedrunning this game so much that you go, oh, I'm like, Maybe it is in there, and then it is, and you just you just lose your mind because it's so great. Like it's such a big time save if you can get those, especially when you're at this point in the run, right? Once you've gotten Dak three, you've gotten through the Arcane Sanctuary, through the Maggot Lair, and all of those horrible maps. You've gotten your runes in a reasonable time. You got your experience, so you're really not looking for resets. And all the time saves that you can get at this point are just magical. So naturally not going to happen for us in this run. But that's OK. We have an Ethrin. Nothing else matters now, right? <laughs> what this bring from the right bio? And that's worth 20 life, but this is a speed run. So we don't, we don't go and turn that in. It takes too long. So yeah, at this point, I can kind of look through the map just to verify uh, my thoughts. And I'm actually going to TP back. I think it's going to be faster running from this direction to get there. There's our great marsh. Nothing's kicking out left there. Nothing's kicking out right there. Yeah, this is just going to be a great marsh map. So the nice thing is it's at least a little bit clear on that. Um, sometimes you get maps where it just looks like there could be that skip, and you run all this way into dead ends, and then you're having to backtrack all this way. and. Uh, you know, this, this one's pretty cut and dry. Great Marsh will lead us to the Flare Jungle. But yeah, all, all of the windiness really makes it uh, difficult to navigate through here. And there's some of people's favorite monsters, Gloams, or Dark Souls later. Um, they are awful. In normal, they're not that bad. Uh, they, they, they can do a little bit of damage, but they're really not too bad. But once you get to hell, especially when you start adding in all of the boost from the other monsters, um, and you start adding in you know, the, or the enchants, I should say, and the auras. Somebody has Conviction Aura, which lowers resistances. I don't, I don't even need that. Um, once you start doing all of that stuff, you're going to run into uh, just pain. And I've lost many characters just to the instant death 
uh, from one of those. The fire enchant that you were talking about, the explosion, can yeah. that proc multiple times from that lightning? Yes. Oh. <laughs> so, well, that's more from the beetles. Oh, okay, okay. From, less so from here, right? Okay. The beetles and the charged bolts. But if these are lightning enchanted and fire enchanted, which they can be in hell, uh, then you're going to get like a dual stack of damage <laughs> plus the explosions on the bolt. It can just turn into really nasty stuff. So you can have characters just tons of health and they just run into absolute death traps. So I'm going to leave a TP just for safety right there because you never know what can happen out here. Um, not a huge fan of these boss groups. The shooters are a little bit annoying. I would almost like birds at this point since I am so high leveled. I would kind of just be down to uh, not have to deal with all of the blocks and stuff. So when you run into these guys, it actually gets a little bit annoying because they're going to just block your path constantly and getting trapped in is awful. I'm going to grab that Rejuve just because I'm running a little low on that. And that can be good for a quick emergency getaway. Because you just never know there. So we'll head over here, and nothing in there. So we'll go back. So in this game, health potions are an overtime heal effect, whereas rejuves are an instant, like, emergency effect. Smart. So Llama tends to like to keep those for those tight, tight moments where he can't exactly just walk out, or they're fully surrounded, so he can take them out quickly. Yeah. And so you can either wear them on your belt, which is generally the safer option, um, and I might put them on my belt later on when we get to, like, the Chaos Sanctuary or something. But generally right now, I have enough time where I can just open up the uh, inventory and right-click on it, assuming I don't miss hit the keys. Which, you know, does happen sometimes. So, like I said, we're almost level 20 at this point, uh, which is also why I'm not a big fan of being out here killing all these things, because I don't need any more experience beyond level 20, yet I'm going to have to get more experience as we go through. So we're actually going to get a lot of experience in this game. I might finish this run at level 22 instead of 21, which is generally a big no-no, but when you finish the tower at level 15, you're going to run into that situation. So I'll go ahead and wait around here. I might not really need to, but we will just for the fun of it because we can get a nice ring. And we'll take the bone wand as well for some gold. So I'm pretty, pretty good on gold. At this point, I do want to go repair. And I'm going to go back to Act 2 for that because it's actually closer. Just to double check and make sure I don't run out of javelins. Um, at this point, I no longer want to be uh, going back to town until I get to a waypoint. So, because then I would overwrite that. Check out what our ring is. Sure, some cold res seems nice. And we'll get rid of that stuff. Probably could have picked up a couple stamina potions as well, but it is what it is. We will just uh, have a little bit of slowdown time at a certain point. In Act 3, you're not going to really be getting those because you have to visit Lysander, which is a little bit further away. So I generally pick them up when I'm in Act 2. Um, it's kind of hoping that I would have had enough, but because of all that running through the uh, Spider Forest and through the Flare Jungle, etc., that just kind of slowed us down there. So wells are really nice. They're going to help us increase. Uh, our stamina again and kind of fill that back up. And then this is just to kind of keep things, keep paths a little bit clearer for ourselves as I don't really want to be dealing with um, getting blocked in from the front and then having a bunch of monsters behind me follow up for the kill or anything. And I wish refilling shrines refilled stamina. You think they would, but unfortunately not. So here's the end of the Flare Jungle. Uh, hopefully we can get a waypoint pretty quickly. I'm going to go check in the top left corner. And like I say, since I am level 20 already, I'm, I'm pretty much just going to skip as much as I can in terms of uh, mobs, unless I'm in tight corridors or places that I just want to make sure I'm a little bit safer. Hopefully, waypoint is here. 
Doesn't look like it. That'll work instead. All right, Stamina Shrine, very nice. So that should take care of all of our stamina issues for the next two and a half minutes, three minutes, whatever it really is. I think it's three minutes. And there's a good waypoint, so all good so far. And we can just continue right down through here. So something you might have seen me doing before in Act 2 was I would save quit after I got out of a specific area. Uh, you won't really see that much in Act 3. And the reason is because the Act 3 run is so long to get back to that portal that it actually is just faster to always just drop that TP, go home, and whatnot. Whereas in Act 2, if you go through the TP, it actually takes longer than to come back, than to just save quit, and then go back through uh, War of to the west, and then take the waypoint from Act 1. So here you can see that our uh, Frost Nova is just doing work. I'm also going to load up on these Rejuves at this time, and we're going to drop a safety time portal as well. Dolls are one of the uh, worst mobs in the game as well. They explode when you kill them, and on explosion, they do a corpse explode. Uh, that does a ton of damage. So that is another way to lose your character very easily, is to just accidentally be too close to dolls. Or if you have a mercenary when you're like teleporting, he kills the dolls, and then they explode and kill you. So it can get really nasty. So while I finish up this area, my gosh, uh, feel free to read a couple more donations. We have $18 from Lee145. Hi, Mr. Lama SC. Hello. Love your runs. Thank Glad you. to see you and Diablo 2 at HEDQ. Cheers. <laughs> Cheers. We have $5 from Frau Badinchen. Hey, Lama. Don't feel too bad. I have once spent time farming the Countess until I had 41 Tau runes before the first half <laughs> dropped. <laughs> That's pretty rough. I want to say we had about 40 runes in total, but they, weren't, they were not all Tau runes. So at least we didn't have that come to us. So Frebedin Chen also says, I'll also donate another $5 if anyone can pronounce my name correctly. Uh, I'm not sure if I got it, but oh well. Frabidinchen? Frabidinchen? Frabidinchen. Frobidchen. Are we getting closer? Anybody? Chat, Wait. give it a try. <laughs> Hi, Frob. Nice. <laughs> Love what you all are doing, and one day I'll also attend the GDQ event. Yeah, for sure you should come. The GDQ events are actually a ton of fun. Like, I would highly recommend them to anybody. Um, it has a different feel from your other events, your Twitch cons or your PAX or any of those. Uh, it's a lot more just laid back. People are just here having a good time, playing games, uh, speedrunning, watching speedruns, and I don't know. I, I love it. They're some of my favorite events to go to, which is why I've gone to so many. So highly recommend them. And we actually got a really good sewers right there. Um, so in the sewers, you want to run clockwise, just as a note for people who are playing this game, uh, simply because you have a slightly better odds that you're going to run into it, or you're going to run into the chest. And then if you run into the chest, you start running reverse of where, the way you were going. Um, getting that right in between those two exits is really nice, as opposed to having to run the entire sewers like all the way around and running into some bad area, or it's in the middle sometimes. You can have some really awful things that happen. So overall, that was a, a map win for us in a sea of doom. <laughs> some of nature. So we're coming into the close of Act 3 right here, and I'm actually going to head over. Uh, I'll probably respec actually after this, now that I think about it. So I'll move over there and go for my respec, and then while I'm there, I'll pick up some stamina potions as well. This is one of those you can respec at this point, you can respec after this point, um, but you definitely want to have the respec done by Mephisto, because otherwise you're just not going to do any damage to him, and it is not going to be fun for you. I'll be a little careful here. Well, these together. 
And I'll put those on the ground. So at this point, I'm also not going to need jabs anymore beyond uh, just poking with them. So I don't need to worry about having two sets and throwing them or anything of that nature. We'll just move on with our one set. Call it good. So we'll come over here, get a couple staminas, a couple things, and reset. So now we're going to change it up. Uh, 25 there. Don't really need anything else. Anywhere else? I'll also get a quick repair in. And we're actually going to go into a respec into charge strike here. And then everything else into power strike right down below. So that is purely the build at this point. No more fun throws or anything like that. It is just nice and simple. And I'll actually make a room for a few more health pots in here, just in case. And now. Now we're heading to Endurance Fate level one. You want to go to the left of the way you came in, since the way we came in is facing. Oh, man, we almost got it. Awful. Since the way we came in is facing to the bottom left, we of course want to go to the bottom right. And as you can see, we already found it right there, which is really nice. And unfortunately, ran into some blocks. So things like that are minor slowdowns. In this level, we want to run straight across. The waypoint will actually be down to that bottom left or bottom right there. Uh, so I am going to try and go in a straight across direction as much as I can while uh, not really caring for the waypoint too much, but taking note of if there's any paths that are really starting to like go down. And so that's not going to be it right there. So we'll start heading over this way and see if this kicks off left. And there we go. Should be level three. So a lot of map reading is just done like that, looking at all the tiles. Like I said before, these experience shrines are just, they got to go. <laughs> they're, they're basically worthless now, uh, which is why I really don't care that much. I maybe could have grabbed that if I really wanted for this Mephisto kill. But at this point, the experience that I'm going to be gaining is extremely low. And uh, that is a lot of damage. And so here's some of the fun that we get to deal with here. Hopefully Mephisto not doing too many attacks. We're going to do too much. And there you go. Woo! <laughs> so, so at this point, we got to circle it. So we actually have a, a chance that we could get some faster run walk or Amazon skills or something on this circlet, which would be really nice. Um, but don't you have boots? I do. Oh, <laughs> nothing good. So we'll trash it. And the reason I kept that diamond is I was considering using it before. Um, but with all the Rao runes and the tier runes and everything that I ended up getting from all those runes, I decided uh, I don't really care enough about the other resistances. So I'll just move forward. So like I said, fire res is the res to have um, for Act 3 and Act 4. Light res can be nice for Act 2, of course, with the beetles. Uh, and then the other res are just yeah, nice to have. But I would say overall, you really want to focus on that fire res purely for that right there. Thank you for the example, Mr. Pitlord. Uh, because if that hits you, you are just, like I said, dead if you have zero resistances. It just puts you in a world of pain. So these maps are also pretty easy to read, which is why I'm skipping a lot of the directions and corners, because there's only three spawn points for the uh, doors. So I'm just looking at walls. Each wall has a specific point where the door is going to spawn. And so I'm purely just running to that point on the wall. If it's not there, then I run to the next point on the other wall uh, and continue as such. So it looks like this one is not there. So now I'll run straight across here towards the middle of this one. And if it's not in the middle here, then it will be in the top left, just kind of over there. So if you want to read a couple more donations while I head to the cast sanctuary, go ahead. We have $50 from Griffin711. Good luck on the run, Llama. Bless RNG. Thank you, Griffin. <laughs> we have $20 from Super Saiyan Fife. Had to donate during this amazing run. Diablo 2 is one of my favorite games of all time, and I've sunk way, way too many hours into it. Yep. 
No regrets. <laughs> nope. <laughs> Keep up the amazing work, Llama. This is going to lifelong happiness to Vivi and Kina. Nice. And looking at that incentive, we have raised almost $6,500. Um, that is a $40,000 incentive for later today in that Final Fantasy IX run. Go get it. So, uh, oh, geez. Wow. So this is a little bit spicy in here. Um, as we're starting to get into all of the joys that this game has to offer. Uh, that might be a reset point. That was a lot of gold. <laughs> all right, we got our gold. So, with Diablo, once again, you don't just have monster and boss group like spawn differences and stuff, but you also have what types of monsters actually spawn on a map. So if you go into the text files, you can actually look and see what monsters each map is able to spawn. Uh, and so you're not always going to spawn the same kind. So that last pairing that we had was pretty brutal, especially with those uh, maulers, right? The giant dudes with the hammers or erdars, whatever they're called at this point in the game. Um, as they will knock you back and give you a mini stun, kind of, when they hit you. And that just uh, doesn't work very well, surprisingly, you know? <laughs> when you're getting stunned and knocked back all the time. Normally, the only thing that can really stun you is a hit stun, which right. is when you take a certain amount of damage, percent HP-wise. There you go. Yeah. Um, and besides that, the only other types will, that will stun are things like the Maulers. Right. So yeah, so the, the hit recovery, or yeah, just the hit stuns are, you know, common and you just deal with them, but you know more when it's like, okay, this monster's gonna do a ton of damage and will probably stun me, but you can t still take a lot of hits in general um, without getting hit. So you can see me going into stun right there. But uh, with the Maulers, they're just absolutely horrible. So we're now approaching one of the Next, 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 you know, times a thousand biggest re reset points or run ruiners uh, of this run, and that is the Chaos Sanctuary. And the reason is because there are so many monsters, you are running into uh, a bunch of these knights right here, which will actually put you into, uh, or they'll use a spell called Decrepify on you that slows you down, and it's horrible. They won't do it until you get into the Chaos Sanctuary. But once you're in there, it's just awful. Um, you run into a lot of the pit lords, which are breathing fire at you and are very dangerous. Uh, mana burners. It's just all in all a really fun time. <laughs> and additionally, trying to get in alone can be very difficult. So if you want another clap point, it'll be in like 30 seconds probably when I get to these points. So there's two... Two places, right? Oh, jeez. Can't even get in the start. <laughs> <laughs> this isn't even the first place I'm talking about. Normally, this one is, you know, mildly open. Not a good sign for us so far. They brought uh, a party. Yeah. <laughs> so, so there's two spots that I have to run past here. And you have to just kind of take a gamble because you don't know what's on the other side and if it's going to block you or not until you're already halfway through, which is, of course, terrible in a game like this, and we're just going to reset that as that is not even a feasible spot for moving through. Really, really good luck so far here. So, so one, yeah, go ahead. One thing that will become more and more uh, prevalent as he gets closer and closer to Baal is money becomes a very, very fine um, commodity yeah. as he pretty much is spending it exclusively on potions and they start costing more and more and he's using more and more. So I actually have a decent chunk of money right now, which is really nice. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, no, it's totally true. And especially when you get to characters like the Sorceress, who is burning through mana potions, which are really expensive, just super fast for all her teleports. There's, I mean, I've, I've seen multiple runs that were on a really great world record pace and then didn't get gold. You know, you didn't, didn't drop a couple items from Diablo or Mephisto. Suddenly you're in a horrible position. So here begins the first of two. Uh, and like I say, well, that one's clogged, and that one's clogged. All right, cool. So we don't even, don't even have to get all the way to the other side to see. I really want that guy to move out. 
This is, where, this is where you gotta kinda dance around. And this is also where cold and decrepify really just get horrible. Okay, so we're through one. And the second one's gonna be short, hopefully. Oh my gosh. It's okay, it's at least not horrible. It's getting worse though. All right, <laughs> there we go, Woo! we're through. <laughs> Man. Like I say, that's just one of those, until you're on the other side, you aren't always sure if you're going to be okay. And when you're doing hardcore runs, it just gets even worse, as you can just really get into a lot of trouble. So I don't like these guys right here. Uh, these mana burns are pretty, pretty brutal, and having a champion pack there is not a lot of fun. So I'm probably going to try and take care of this, be a little bit safer with it. And, uh, and then we can go and begin our journey. So, just knock out these Stormcasters here. And that chance for Amplify damage is a little nice, but it doesn't do a ton for this character because a lot of my damage is actually coming from not me hitting, but rather my charge strikes, so all the charge bolts that are released when I'm hitting. So that's where the damage really uh, comes from here. And this guy is awful. Jeez. All right, not, not our favorite chaos. I really want a Frost Nova here, but looks like we're not getting a proc on it yet. So you can see Decrepify being mixed with all the other stuff down here really isn't fun. And even with like max fire res and all that stuff, I'm still having to do a ton of kiting in this area just to try and deal with it. So if you get if you get good spawns down here, you can save so much time. Oops. But the nice thing is, with all my resistances, I should be pretty good for mostly tanking these guys. I do need to be careful of their hits still. And they still do some damage. But just gotta sneak around, get a couple hits in. And the blue guy's all that we really care about. So we're just going to drag him out, get that kill, and hopefully we can get some blocks on this. So monsters run into each other. That's so bad. <laughs> monsters run into each other, and you can use their own uh, speeds to slow down or speed them up, essentially. So that's what I'm doing in this regard, where I'm just saying, OK, rather than fighting all those extra fast monsters, I'm just going to slow down there or get some monsters that are slower, put them in the way, and then run away, and they'll block each other. Jeez. All right. So we got to clear this out a little bit. These Oblivion Knights are my biggest pain point, but also the mana burn happening behind us. So we'll clear that, and we'll go ahead and pop this seal here. See what we get. So these guys are pretty strong. I'll drop a safety TP. I'm also going to be going back through that anyways, just to get more potions here pretty soon, I would imagine. And with the fanaticism, they can do a lot of damage. And yeah, we'll go get potions really quickly. So if you want to read a couple more donations, go ahead. We have $25 from Foghorn. This run started off amazing. I was sure you would get a world record, and then the tower had me shedding a tear. <laughs> no, I thought, he shall prevail and find his rune. Oh, boy. He will pull it together. And oh, my Zod, he did it. <laughs> my soul is at rest. Give him hell, Llama. <laughs> That was beautiful. That was beautiful. So that's a bunch of different runes in the game. Yeah, claps for that. That's some, <laughs> some serious work right there. Oh, gosh. Is there ever a spot? <laughs> Holy cow. Well, this isn't good. They want you to hit that level 22. <laughs> well, we're getting there for sure. <laughs> <laughs> this is really bad. So sometimes the game just really 
really has a lot of fun, or whatever you want to call it. <laughs> and that is the entirety of this run. Can we sneak out? No, we can't. Oh, we're trapped. It's just getting worse. <laughs> Do I have a town portal set? <laughs> God, I hope so. <laughs> I can't remember, I'm sorry. <laughs> Woo, you, buddy. Oh, yeah! <laughs> 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 I still gotta clean it all up anyways, but at least we're safe now. <laughs> so yeah. Sometimes the game is this. And this is when your world record run goes away. <laughs> no matter how well it went before, sometimes you just get trapped in those spots. The best part of all of this is Llama was completely out of health potions and was basically on the fly picking them up and using them. <laughs> yeah, that was disgusting. <laughs> So at least you get to see some fun examples of, uh, like I said, this game is more of a, a skill run. And uh, that's sort of the stuff that you deal with, right? Those are the moments that really separate you right there, I feel like, and, and uh, can lead you to, you know, maybe continuing with that record if you had such an amazing time, or at least staying alive. Oh, gosh. So Oblivion Knights are, are, this is just a horrible combination. I have these dudes mana burning me and the Obliv Oblivion Knights slowing me and cursing me. It is just, just a, a wonderful combination here. And they just ran off, so we're just gonna leave them. And we'll, we just wanna focus on Blue Man right here. So just gonna try and get in, get a couple shots. That's nice that we got that Frost Nova proc. And let's see if we can get him before we die. Yeah. Maybe a poison? It's not a lot of damage. Where is he? Now they're all blue. There we go. <laughs> there Woo! we yeah! go. <laughs> Aptly named, right? All right, so now we're fighting Diablo. This would be the end of uh, classic right here were we to be just doing a classic run. I need to be very careful because of his lightning breath and because of that in particular. So if he does a freeze hit on me and then goes into lightning breath, my move speed is not enough to escape it. And so it actually gets really bad for us. So you just have to be careful of that. And that is actually half physical and half lightning damage. So a lot of people think it's fire damage and then they have all this fire res and then they're really confused as to why that is just destroying them. That is why. So at this point, because I'm frozen, I'm just gonna move back and we'll just head back right here and grab a few more potions. This has been a lot of potions for this Chaos Sanctuary. Way more than normal. And I'll just grab a couple more thawing potions to deal with any more shenanigans. He's very eager to hit with that. So you just gotta be a little careful. And avoid that. I was doing some hardcore practice runs. Uh, since that's one of the records I'm going for. And that was the end of me in that run was Diablo's lightning breath. Just a quick, couldn't quite get out of the way and easy fall. Now the nice thing is, if you're on Nightmare or Hell, it's actually super easy because you can just stand underneath it. So you stand closer to him and you actually won't take damage from it if you're right on top of him. <gasps> ah. Oh, <dang. laughs> <It's> okay. <laughs> Now we have this fun. Oh, jeez. <laughs> <Yep. laughs> he likes to do that sometimes. Thought I could finish him, but... 
He's very aggressive with his lightning right now. Yeah, Llama's getting pretty unlucky with the RNG on the lightning. Woohoo! What else? Woohoo! Good job. <laughs> All right, so at least we're good on gold. I'll go ahead and do a quick shop just in Act 4 here, but gold is going to be pretty fine at this point. So we'll just continue with our potions. And I'll go ahead and get a couple more. I actually don't need that. And that. I'll get a couple more stamina potions just for the run. So we didn't quite make it to 21. Uh, and at this point, experience is going to be near impossible to come by. So it looks like we'll finish just at 21, I would imagine, here. Um, which isn't really a big deal. An extra point of charge strike actually could be okay. Could be kind of nice. Just because the damage increase is pretty significant, especially at these lower levels. But, you know, it is what it is. It's what we're going to deal with. And I don't think it's quite worth the time to go spend to kill stuff to get that level up? It might be. That's one of those things where you can just sit there and, and do theory crafting on and stuff, and you can never get an exact answer because you can never be 100% sure on what exactly you're going to get when you get to that point, right? So if I, if I go there and there's no monsters right there, then, you know, all right, well, now it takes longer. If there are monsters, then it's shorter. If there's an experience shrine, it's even shorter. So, you know, maybe grabbing those experience shines a little earlier would have helped. Uh, but I just wasn't expecting everything to be this chaotic and that chaos to be so filled and stuff. So, it is what it is. And then, of course, you've got all the other odds that can happen as well. For instance, you know, there's a chance that I could get some faster run walk boots. Let's say that's about 1 in 10,000 out here or something like that. Uh, just from a monster I kill, like right around here, probably about 1 in a few thousand, honestly, from like Shank or something. Um, so, you know, so if I'm out here and I kill a hundred monsters, that gives me like a 50% chance <laughs> to get those boots. Because I either find them or I don't. Wait, is that how it works? <laughs> no. No. <laughs> I got my masters in stats, so I think I'm pretty solid. I'm locked in on those things. That being said, if you did get them, you'd be pretty immortal at this point. I would be extremely <laughs> mobile. That is correct. Is that what you said? Um, <laughs> yeah, so if you want to read a couple more donations, go ahead. At this point, we are just running straight uh, until we get to the Ancients. We have $25 from Nico Koniko san. Amazon rules. Love what you guys are doing. Amazon. <laughs> Amazon. <laughs> We have an anonymous $100 donation. Love watching the Diablo 2 speedrun. Thank you. <laughs> we have $25 from Flash Laser. Nothing better to come home and start the weekend with the Diablo 2 speedrun. Love what you guys are doing. Thank you so much. We have $50 from Sticky210. Thank you to all the speedrunners and the entire AGDQ staff. Special thanks to Mr. Llama SC for running one of my favorite games of all time. Oh, yeah, and big shout out. Can we get claps in the audience and chat for uh, the GDQ staff? Yes. <laughs> for all the people here. <laughs> for you guys as well, yeah. Yeah, there you go. It is a lot to put on this event, and uh, they do a fantastic job and keep things running extremely smoothly. Um, this is got a thousand more things than my stream and it's about ten times smoother. So, <laughs> you know, really a big shout out to all of them. We have $432.10 from Zamorak. Hi. Whoop. Hi. Hello. Hello. <laughs> Hello. Thank you. Wow. <laughs> so, once again, at this point, this is, uh, this is just the running portion. Just kind of depends on what maps you get as is a lot of this game. I'm going to definitely set some safety TPs. 10 TPs left, just a little reminder to ourselves. Um, also depends the monster spawns in here. I definitely don't want to run into Death Lords and things. Death Lord packs can be pretty brutal. That looks like that's going to be our exit down just below us. So not too bad if it is. If it isn't, then this map's going to get a lot worse. Um, and it looks like it is, yeah. So 
not too bad right there. You're always just trying to get these quick turnoffs, and there can be a lot of time saves for character like, characters like this, as opposed to, for instance, the sorceress, where she's just teleporting through all of this, and so, you know, it's the difference of generally, like, five seconds versus 12 seconds or something if it's a little bit longer, unless you have a really terrible map. Um, you know, these characters, you can lose a minute if you have to run, like, an entire section. So we got two pretty good maps right there. I'm pretty happy with that. And, uh... And then we will just continue moving forward. One more, well, then we'll get to the Ancients. Ancients are a little difficult on the Amazon. Um, you're definitely wanna, gonna want to split them up. At least that's the strategy that I always prefer. So just spreading them out and then dealing with them more one at a time, um, I find is a helpful way to not have to worry too much about getting spun on by Madoc or Talik when you're trying to deal with Madoc or Korlik, jumping, you know, all of these things. So there's different ways to kind of abuse them. If there's any real, like, good glitches or whatever in the game or bug abuse, it's abusing the pathing of uh, the Ancients just to, and the, the visibility of those monsters so that they're not always just right on top of you, following you everywhere. And dead end, probably turning. OK, interesting. So those Death Lords right there, and right here, and right there, and right there. Those are all really scary. Um, they, they do a, one, they have really big attacks, but two, they have a frenzy attack. And so the more times that they hit you, the more, like, the faster their attack speed gets. And it gets really quick. And the faster they get as well. So it gets pretty deadly uh, pretty quickly if, if they're doing a lot to you. So let's see. We'll just drag these guys over here. And I want to really split off Madoc if I can. But if I get Madoc in there, so there we go. We got him spinning to the corner. Now I'm going to run as fast as I can to this other side. And hopefully this should just drag the other two, which it does. And now I'm going to try and, oh, just lost him. I was trying to deal to get him into a special slot, essentially, where Maddox's going to be throwing at me, but Talik's not going to be, or Korlik won't be hitting. All right, so there's spin away. This might be tough. We'll have to see if we can get there. We're going to go hard to the corner and see who comes. OK. All right, we got one. We can deal with that. Oof, that is nasty damage, though. So it's also best when dealing with Madoc to generally have him up against a wall or something, so that way he's not going to be turning and going in different directions. And this is also where having that plus one to cold damage is really helpful. So I'm going to try and get him to move this way a little bit more if I can. And then I'll push him this way and try and, there we go. So now he's not going to be running away. And that'll give us a little bit better chance of dealing with him. At the same time, we do need to be a little careful because, like I said, he does have damage. That's decently high. At the same time, these Ancients spawn with random gear on. So you might get one time where you're fighting them and Madoc does no damage, and another time where you're fighting him and he does 300 damage a shot. Kind of just depends what gear he spawns with. Uh, and sometimes they'll have cold damage. Sometimes they'll have... I mean, it's just all sorts of stuff. So you really have to just watch and uh, be careful with all those things. Another thing to note, Llama can't actually go back up to town for more potions, or else it will reset right. this fight. Correct. Yeah, this fight is one go, and that's all. You can't leave this area. You can't go back to town. Whatever it is, it'll always reset. So you have to make sure that you have enough potions and everything that you need uh, to deal with the fight in one take. T one take. So hopefully I have enough potions. I wasn't, wasn't really expecting to use as many health potions on him, but he took a little longer than I wanted. So a common practice for newer runners here is before the fight starts, they'll empty inventories of potions onto the ground. Yep. So they, if they need any more, they can just pick it up. Yeah. So Madoc does have higher light res, whereas these guys do not. So a nice way to deal with that is, you know, it's going to be a lot easier to kill these guys and Madoc. At the same time, you'll notice that Talik is no longer spinning on me. This is because I'm up against a cliff wall, and he would actually spin off the wall <laughs> if he were to try and whirlwind. 
So this is a great way to abuse him, and you can do this in multiple areas, where you just pin yourself up against the wall, and then Talik is no longer going to be able to do Whirlwind, which is really the way that you die in normal Ancients. Later on, there's a lot of other ways to die, Hell and Ancients and stuff, but in normal Ancients, this is your big, like, killer. So that's always a great way to just abuse that. And yeah, what Funk was saying is very true, especially in Hell. I'm not sure there's a single character in a Hell run that doesn't drop potions on the ground to pick up later. And of course, you have to be pretty quick on that as well, as those potions will eventually expire. So in this case, though, pretty easy. Normal agents aren't too bad once you get them separated. Please clap. <laughs> I was mesmerized, sorry. <laughs> All good. <laughs> so now we're in the World Stone, and this is pretty much exactly like the Catacombs in that I have no clue of which way I need to run in level one. In level two, I'm going to want to run in a clockwise direction because the waypoint is going to be from that counterclockwise way, essentially, and so I want to kind of avoid that and just get right to uh, bail. And then level three, I'm going to have no clue again. So exactly like Catacombs, just exploring the map, checking out tiles, looking for exits. And if I don't see an exit, I'll just continue moving forward. And it doesn't look like anything there, so we'll just keep going this way. So one more great place to lose a few minutes in your run when you're on a great pace. You'll notice that's a theme. <laughs> I'm also going to drop a town portal right here. Eight left. Uh, just in case I do run into the waypoint. Because if I do, I can always take that waypoint back to my town portal, and then that can sometimes be a quicker route rather than actually going, running all the way back if it's in just such like a horrible position. So for instance, if this is the waypoint right here, because this is going to be something, then I'll take it back and it's, it would be up there. But since it's not, we'll continue forward into level three. Hey, Llama. What's that? Your shield's breaking. <laughs> Uh, that's okay. <laughs> I don't have to worry quite as much about fire damage, but Bale does have one attack that deals a decent amount of it, so hopefully we can avoid that, I suppose. Hopefully it's not broken before then. Um, and then Death Lords, once again, are scary and do exist down here, uh, as well as souls in when you're in hell. So those are the real, like, scares when you're running this through hell. Um, if you're just teleporting through and you get caught on those guys are running through and there's a pack of and now you can see they're faster because they got hits off oh jeez oh boy let's hope it's this way <laughs> come on baby let's go so we're just gonna try and avoid all of that mess right there yay all right because that is nothing that we want to deal with 12 of those guys so the nice thing is the amazon can actually kill death lords pretty quickly um, that is the benefit, but you can only really face like one at a time. Cool, there's two. Um, <laughs> you can only face like one at a time because if you start running into more, they're just going to constantly have you stun locked and then you'll just get locked up forever. So that's why you have to constantly be in this slight kiting mode to just pull them back and, and just fight piece by piece. And the less of these guys we have to fight, the better for sure. I also need health potions, so we'll set that up, see what all we have in here. Doesn't look too bad. Sometimes you can get in here and have like 14 Death Lords and then, you know, yet again, bye-bye to the run. So the potions here are actually more expensive uh, because I didn't do the first quest in, in Act 5. Oh, I should also get TPs. Good afternoon. So because I didn't do the first quest, the potions are more expensive. But because I have so much gold, I'm not quite as worried about it. So it's one of those trade-offs that I'm just kind of making. Additionally, I have a diamond, which is worth a little bit of gold if I really need it. But I'm really just trying to stay as low as I can right now because Bale will decrepify me. Oops. That was an accident. And there's a portal delay on entering and leaving. So that's why I waited before going back in. So I just want to stay as low down here and kill as much as I can before I have to go up and get decrepified and deal with stuff while decrepified. Which he didn't decrepify me. Very interesting. 
He'll do it soon enough. He's laughing. He fooled you, Llama. He did. <laughs> he did. <laughs> so that poison is really not going to do much damage at all. But, you know, why not? All right, good. And there's the Decrepify. The nice thing is we did get in the kill on uh, that first group, or on, on the boss, because he can actually be pretty annoying if, if you get to Decrepify before killing him and then you start missing some hits, especially at the attack speed that you have when you're Decrepified. If you're missing hits right there and then you're getting put into hit recovery, you're just nonstop, like, having no chance. So on wave two, I'm actually going to do a little bit of a drag on these guys. And that's totally fine. I just want to get all of them away because being cold and decrepified is basically impossible. I mean, there's like no way to do anything there. And they constantly get respawned if they're right next to those guys. So, hey, our 30th round run. <laughs> <laughs> so let's move up here and now we can just fight them. We'll get decrepified probably pretty soon. There you go. But not a huge deal. Except they're doing a ton of damage. And but yeah, so if I if I'm decrepit fight and cold, I mean I'm I'm just not even getting a hit in pretty much. Come on. Oh! Oh! Ah. <laughs> so I was trying to actually stay at one health right there. The reason is because I'm going to now do death straps. Uh, so this is, of course, unique to softcore only. Um, but I'm going to just die right here to these guys. Thank you. And then we'll come in here, set a TP, and now begin dragging these guys out. And hopefully we get all of them. I saw one just went up there. Don't want to die yet. So because that dude is light, lightning enchanted, it's quite miserable. I don't have the boss. There's the boss. So they all follow on a leash of their boss. So if the boss stays in, they will all turn around and run back to him eventually. Uh, if the boss comes out, then they will most likely all follow, though sometimes they don't quite make it out. So they did that time, which is good. And we'll just do this a couple more times. And then we'll pick up our body again. So I guess in terms of abuse of this game, this is the most abuse that it has. Basically, if you get out of this throne room, it counts that as you having cleared the waves. For some reason, they didn't set the trigger on like the boss dying or something. Uh, they set the trigger on if monsters are still inside of the throne room. So just simply moving out of the throne room moves on to the next wave. So it's very convenient, of course, for speedrunning, especially when your character is quite weak and uh, it could take a long time to kill those waves. So instead, you just uh, do this and avoid these waves, and then you're good to go. So after this, we will be fighting Bale, and the line ends right around there, so I should be good to just die right here. So, yeah, timer will end on Bale kill. We still have a little bit of time with it. I'm actually also going to get a couple more potions and some thawing potions. I wonder how many ha-has are in the chat. <laughs> hopefully, hopefully a lot now. <laughs> <laughs> so this will still take a tiny bit of time. Amazon is decently strong, but if he's being a punk and dropping a lot of clones or doing a lot of cold damage, whatever, uh, it can still take a little bit of time. So this is always another great place that you can gain or lose a lot of time depending on how nasty your bail is, essentially. So far, he hasn't been too bad. Hopefully that wasn't a jinx. Mm -hmm. All right. Good so far. Is this the fabled no clone? 
No clone bail? That'd be fantastic. Don't jinx it. Yeah. <laughs> so he, he can clone himself, and then it's just horrible awfulness to try and deal with, as there's now two bails putting you into hit recovery. Um, so trying to avoid that is definitely very nice. Sometimes you get zero clones, sometimes you get 10. It, it really just varies. And you can despawn it, but that takes time. So getting zero clones would be very nice, which we are very close to. And hopefully not too many more of those. Or this. <laughs> or that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm almost, and time. Yay. Wow. <laughs> no clones. No clones. <laughs> good job, Llama. Yeah, good job. Ooh, buddy. <laughs> that was a run. <laughs> <laughs> so I believe we have cows incentive, right? We do have cows. All right. So I'll head over and grab some potions. And then, uh, yeah. <laughs> Let's get some moos in the chat for some cows right here. Moo. Moo. <laughs> oh. So they actually went around. This is something I talked to one of the, the developers of the game, Max Schaefer. And he said that when they were doing that, they just literally went around and had the uh, developers and stuff just moo into the, like, <laughs> Whatever, right? Just go ahead and just move for us. <laughs> and then they would all just move into the tape recorder or whatever they used. And uh, so it's all just human moves from people that were going, wait, what? <laughs> like they didn't even know why they were moving at the time, I'm pretty sure. Oh, wow. Oh, wait, why am I going there? So we actually already have all the pieces we need, which is really nice. So this is the what? Secret cow level. <laughs> um, at this point, we are also. Uh, it's a little tough because normally I would be a poison since, of course, I can stay away. Instead, we're going to have to do some fun kitey stuff, uh, and it's going to be a lot harder. So, you know, <laughs> it's what we're going to have to deal with. But for all the moves and for you... You can hear the confusion in the moose. Right, yeah. Now just imagine like someone coming up to you while you're at work and being like, hey, moo into this for me real quick. Like, moo? That's perfect. That was great. We're using that one. We got lots of moos in chat. <laughs> moo. And then the guys who just don't care. They're just like, moo, whatever. All right, let's go. Move on. Oh, jeez. Awful. So yeah, this this really gets to highlight the uh, style of play with kiting, right? Which I feel like is a lot of the Amazon, but especially when you're in the cow level, you're just really going to be kiting all over the place. But these Frost Nova procs really are really nice. Uh, and this also goes to show just how bad of gear you actually need, or, or you know, how good of gear is actually required to beat the game. It's basically nothing. Uh, a couple things that you pick up along the way. Sometimes you finish a run without boots or gloves or anything like that. Uh, it gets pretty interesting sometimes, just how little you'll actually have on your character. So I'll, I'll look through the gear really quickly at the end there, just because it's fun to laugh at. And it's not just on normal runs, it's also on hell runs that you'll run into that as well. So I'm pretty sure I finished a hell run one time and I literally had white boots on. It's just like, okay, because I never found boots that were better, and uh, it was a sorceress, so she had teleport, so I wasn't gonna go like shop shop any boots really. And you just you just gotta keep going, like, you know, it's not not always worth the time to shop. Sometimes it is. It, it really depends. But once again, it's always that how much time am I putting in versus do I think the survivability is gonna be worth it? What's the odds of getting it? And I mean, you guys know I'm really good with odds and stuff, so. <laughs> Usually. How hard is kiting here? How they, hard is kiting? Yeah, they don't seem to move very oh, fast. Oh, jeez. Boo. 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 
<laughs> we'll take our extra point in charge strike. So this actually also used to be the part that was used for uh, leveling up. So in a hell run, you would continue with poison jabs. Hell Amazon is actually a very different beast. It's really fun to watch because now we mix into Boazon. So I'd actually be an exploding arrow Boazon, which does quite well. Um, but I don't do cows with it. I'm actually moving forward with it instead. But in the past, you used to do the cows, and you would use poison jabs uh, for it. And so it was very just, I don't know, it was very different. And a lot of, a lot of characters actually leveled up in the cow, cows from level 20 to 25, or 21 to 25. Because at that time, we were doing bail, cows, and then you would move forward back to bail. But our new strats now are where you get level 25, or up to 24, I suppose, before Ancients. Uh-oh. Uh, boom. Before you get to um, Act 3, when the experience is still good, that way you're not wasting experience, essentially, by running through Act 4 and 5 when you're not gaining anything. And like I said, the reason for that is because there's a level cap, and so the monsters in Act 4 and 5 are actually too high of a level. So they're harder to kill, but I don't get any experience from them, or 5% until I get to level 25. And then they remove the upper cap and they only have the bottom cap on um, at that point. So I'll, as soon as you hit 25, you'll notice that like everything is just giving you crazy amounts of experience all of a sudden because there's no longer that cap. And so that's, what, that's when barrel runs become effective, which is why people go do barrel runs at that time. I've always wondered, did you do something to these cows, Llama? Read them, you know? I don't know. I because they seem to the have portal. a beef don't, with don't you. Don't do it. Oh. <laughs> Moo! 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 Uh-oh, uh-oh, uh-oh. Moo! <laughs> that's a lot of beef. Um, oh. I'm just saying, that's not a pun. That, that's a really a lot of beef there. <laughs> but... Yeah, so, so like I say, normally when you're dealing, like, you don't want to be melee against cows. Uh, so you want them kind of spaced out and things like that. But in that case, if I was running poison still, I would just run the poison, then we would be all good. And things would be a lot smoother there, because I could just run around and just throw poison jabs, and everything would die pretty quickly. Are you thirsty, Llama? Don't. You seem to be milking this level pretty hard. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Don't yeah. clap for that. <laughs> Awful. What is this crowd? This is utterly remarkable. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> so now we have the cow king, who is lightning enchant or lightning immune. Lightning Enchanted, Lightning Immune. So we can either sit there and try and do stuff, or we can cheer on a mercenary. <laughs> Let's go, Merce! <laughs> we'll go get one first. <laughs> Come on, buddy. I really hope you can do this. <laughs> yeah, offensive, sure. And let's get some potions for you. <laughs> Give him the bow. <laughs> let's get some really good potions for you. Yeah, there you go. We'll get him a bow, too. How no, we'll, we'll, we'll really stack them up here. We'll give them, we'll be nice. We'll give them a helmet, too. How strong is the bow against bovine enemies? Moo. <laughs> <laughs> a mix. Half and half. Not very, though. Oh, fair. Yeah. <coughs> no pikes. All right. We want to get a pike for him. So we're gonna bounce back and forth. And one with cold damage or something would be really nice. Wow. All right, let's just hack the game. Uh, okay, so perfect. And take my armor. Hello. So now we cheer him on as he fights. Go! Go! You got this! No. Go, Rosa! Woo. Go! Oh, oh, come on. Oh, you got oh, this. Oh, oh, yeah. oh. <laughs> Nailed it. I give you armor. 
And he drops a bunch of stamina potions because <laughs> milk. You know, you get it. Fight the potions. Yeah. That's fine. It's cute. So we'll clean up a few more cows here, and then whenever you guys need, we've killed the king. Uh, we can we can head off there. Wrap it up pretty soon. Okay. So uh, yeah, we'll kill this group of cows here. Razin doing work. Get it, buddy. Man, what a tank. <laughs> and can we get one final move from Llama? I am over. No. <laughs> 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 there you go. Thank you. Yay. Good job. Thanks for the run, Llama. Yeah, this is great. Yeah, big shout out to everybody. Thank you so much. Thank you for the couch again. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching, guys. Make sure to get those donations in. We got to be near a million, right? Mm -hmm. Oh, right? we are very close to a million. Very close. Let's get to that. So thank you, everybody. Peace. <laughs> and of course, thank you, Mr. Lama. We are going to be taking a quick ad break, so don't go away. We will be back soon. Devolver Digital is everyone's seventh favorite indie game label, at least in the top ten, and proud supporters and obsessive viewers of Games Done Quick. Dash on over to devolverdonequick.com for a selection of GDQ run games and upcoming releases at up to 75% off. All right, and coming up next, we have an interview with KZ Fru, our Grand Theft Auto Vice City run later today. He's sitting over in our interview area with Darkman, so we're going to head on over there and see what they got. All right, everybody, welcome back to AGDQ 2019. I am Darkman78, and joined uh, with me right here is KZ Fru. He is the runner for the upcoming Grand Theft Auto Vice City run. So, KZ, welcome. Am I? Oh, man, I am. Yeah, you kind of oh. are. Okay, well. It's in, like, it's in like 30 minutes, <laughs> so are you ready? Yeah, I got some time to practice. Okay, that's perfect. Cool. So, welcome, KZ. Pleasure Thank to you. have you. Absolutely. So, uh, kind of talk to me a little bit about Grand Theft Auto, like, you know, Vice City in particular as a game. Um, this is, like, when somebody thinks about it, you know, they think it's a huge open world game. You got a lot of exploration, you got a lot of missions to do, but you're going to do it in under an hour. Yeah, I mean, uh, there's quite a big sequence break in like the, the second to third act. Uh, okay. We just pretty much skip uh, a lot of what's called the asset missions. Okay. And that's what really brings the time down. Uh, back in the days of, of Adam A.K. and, mm. and um, Oasis, or these like really old school runners, you'd have sure. to run around to do all this, and there was like a lot of RNG because you had to collect cars, mm -hmm. and you had to, you know, there were a lot of RNG patterns with like blown up vehicles. It was just all over the place. So, you know, we cut straight to the end. Gotcha. That's a, well, that not sounds cool. straight to the no, end. Not straight. <laughs> Almost there. <laughs> you can't go straight to the end. That's SSU. We're running any percent, no SSU. Gotcha. We're not doing that. Gotcha. Got to have a little bit of fun, you know? Right. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Got to play a little bit of the yeah. game. Speedrunners like to play their game. That's right. Actually. <laughs> Believe it or not. Who knew? Yeah. Um, so talk to me. This isn't the first time you've run this game at right. GDQ. Yes. So this is the second time. Um, can you draw upon some experience uh, with that based on how the last run went to see maybe you can do it better this time? Or, you know, how does, it, how does that help you? Yeah, uh, well, you know, me and Vice City at GDQ, that goes back to 2017, okay. AGDQ. That was a very fun event. And uh, I think it did pretty good. And then I went to ESA as well mm -hmm. a couple times. Um, took it to GDQ X in November, right. 
Feels like it was just yesterday. Right? I'm already back here. Did I ever leave? I don't know. <laughs> I'm not sure. <laughs> yeah, me neither. No, but yeah, so, you know, I've done this a couple of times. Yeah. And uh, I've been playing a lot of Vice City lately, actually. There's a tournament going on. I'm undefeated. Oh. All right? Yeah. All right. Five and zero. Oh. That's pretty good. Five wins. That's pretty good. Zero losses. That's good. No ties. That's what undefeated yeah. is. Yeah. Yeah. That, <laughs> in case you didn't know at home, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So uh, I've been just playing a lot. There's been a lot of runners. There's been like 45, 50 people playing the game. That's cool. crazy. That's big numbers. So you sound pretty confident. Yeah. I mean, we'll see how it goes. It is. It is Grand Theft Auto. It right. is very. Uh, it's an entropic game. There's a lot sure. that can go wrong. Sure. But it's all about crisis management. Mm -hmm. Stay cool. Okay. All right. We wouldn't be remiss without asking the hard-hitting questions. So we got to know right now, Grand Theft Auto, Vice City, uh -huh. favorite song, go. Out of Touch by Hollow Notes. I can appreciate that. It's not even a discussion. <laughs> I can appreciate that. There's a song in there by Toto. It's called uh, Af Africa. I mean, never heard of it. It's, you know, I don't know. I don't know if Toto's got it, man. Well, I bless that song, so. Uh-huh. Sure you do. <laughs> All right, so we're going to go into a few social media questions. We got the hard-hitting questions uh, that were sent to us via Twitter, so thank you very much. And, of course, with all of, most of our interviews, you can submit Twitter questions yourself if you want to ask the runner. So let's ask some of them. Uh, so we have from at Peace World. It says, KZ Fru, how's your day? Man, you're really... Uh, it's a hard-hitting question. I know. You're really not pulling any punches yeah. here. Mm -hmm. Let's see. I woke up. I did eat. Okay. Eating is a good start. Okay. Breakfast is very important. I had some nice eggs. They do decent food here. Okay. I'm quite pleased with it. Yeah. Good, good coffee. You know, so I'm feeling I'm feeling pretty okay, right? That's good. You're not you're not here every day. GDQ is uh not not a year round event. That's right. It's got a mini event, sure, but That's right. you know. It is special. Okay. So you you prepared for the occasion. I, I like it. I like it. We'll give it like a seven point nine out of ten. Seven point nine. Yeah, I mean, can you not bump that up to an eight? All right, we'll bump it up to Thank an eight. You. Just for you. Yes. All right. All right. Uh, from at MBDTW, Casey Fru, can you confirm or deny the rumors that Billie Jean is your lover? Man, I just, I don't know these questions, man. These are rough. I did say they were so hard. hard. I know. Yeah, really, really uh, getting under the fingernails uh -huh. here. Uh -huh. uh, what goes on with me and Billie Jean is uh, mine and her business. But, you know, it is my word over, his, uh, over hers. I am sitting here. Is Billie Jean here? Have you seen Billie Jean? Nope. Exactly. Who are you going to believe? No one. Think about it. Yeah. All right. So, last question from OPS Buskis, I believe. I probably said that completely wrong. It doesn't matter. Uh, Casey Fruit, when's the Cars 2 PSP speedrun? <sighs> you know, uh, Cars 2 PSP, that's, uh, that's a gauntlet, man. That's a gauntlet. If, if, if Vice City is a rocket to the moon, if Vice City is ambition incarnate, if it is just everything that speedrunning is about packaged into one hour, Cars 2 on PSP, I don't know, man. Might be a rocket to Mars. We might be going to Mars. It's up so, there. That, that's good. Yeah. yeah. I'm good yeah. with that. Yeah. All right. It's up there. Don't mind the technical difficulties. It happens. That's fine. Somebody, somebody press buttons. It happens. Sorry, yeah. Don't worry about it. Um, all right. Final question I want to ask you, uh, Casey. Yep. You're a very passionate commentator. Like, you know, I've seen you, like, at run. You know, I, whenever you're doing a run for GDQ, you're just very super passionate, super, like, you, it's a lot of energy. Like, what is it that, like, kind of makes you go to that route? Like, what is it that makes you so passionate? Is it the game? Is it just being on the stage? What is it? I mean... It's all about bringing people into the hobby, right? And I think that's a great way is to just embody what speedrunning is about. We, we love games. I don't know. Video games, they're pretty good. Pretty good. They're pretty good. Pretty good. We like them so much that we're here. And that's really cool. And we're doing this thing all for charity. And it's, it's a huge deal. It's really cool. Why would you not be happy to be here? Why would you not have energy, right? I can't argue with that. Exactly. <laughs> that's what it's all about, man. Awesome. And that's what I try to bring to the table. I love it. Well, Casey, thank you so much for taking some time to, uh, you know, take a few minutes time to interview with us for the upcoming Grand Theft Auto Vice City run. But before we go away, it's everybody's favorite time. The wonderful man himself, Sent. Sent, welcome. Where are you? Yeah. Oh, I don't see you. Oh, oh there I'm, you are. I'm, okay. I'm right over here, Dr. Oh, hey, what's I'm, up? I'm just on the other side of the couch. Oh, you know, you know I, it's so far away. It, it really, object permeance is, is a really hard yeah, really. concept. I understand. You know, Casey? Hey. 
Great to meet you. Wonderful interview, by the way. Now, Absolutely. Thank you. I, I had a question or two for you. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, we had our wonderful in-house artist, LK, do a, do a little bit of a sketch-up of uh, you, you know, when we last saw you. It looks like you have uh, six wanted stars there and are driving a go-kart. Oh, wanna, You want to maybe explain what happened there? Really? Well, <laughs> it was a long day. All right. <laughs> All right. All right. You know, a lot of I've, resets, a lot of things going on. Sometimes you just got to run from the police, you know. I've, I've, you know what? I've In been there. I've never been there, but I've, I've totally been there. Go-karts are a crazy thing, man. You never know what's going to happen. Yeah, sure. exactly. Sure. So anyway, I got a, a bunch of really great prizes that you guys can get in to uh, win if you get a donation in between now and the end of Pokemon Gold, which is uh, coming up a little later. I think two or three runs away, uh, I think right after uh, GTA, actually. Mm -hmm, exactly. Yep. Um, so, I mean, first up, guys, we have these beautiful Evolution pillow buddies from uh, Ginger Kitty Art. You know, I love these. We got a, we got a Sylveon. We got a Glaceon. We got a uh, Leafeon here. It's the green one. Um, you know, I, I love them. They're, they're cute. You can fold them up and they're little... Got little feet, or you can just use them as a pillow, you know, however you want to do it. $20 minimum donation. Uh, get your donations in. Uh, Darkman, Casey, what's your favorite Eevee Lucian? I got, I got to ask. You know, Eevee is such a polarizing Pokemon. Vaporeon. Vaporeon. All right. All right. Solid choice. We don't have that one, but solid choice. Casey, what you got for me? I play Grand Theft Auto, man. I don't know anything about Pokemon. All right, great. I'm going to have you hold me. Thank, yeah. thank you for the gift, Sin. I really appreciate it. You're going to have to give those back to me until you finish a Cars 2 speedrun. I'm, I'm just saying. <laughs> The stakes are high here. The, the stakes really. have been raised for sure. <laughs> really, for sure. So from our uh, wonderful friend Kari Fry, we have this beautiful field guide, the Canto book. It's just full of all of her amazing artwork. Uh, let's, let's see what random page I open to. Uh, that appears to be an upside-down Kabutops. That is, that is an upside-down Kabutops. Um, great Pokemon. Looks good upside-down. Let's, let's turn it sideways. It's probably a better angle for it. Is it? Yeah, um, maybe. Okay. $5 minimum donation for now until the end of Pokemon Gold. And just as a reminder, you know, I love Kari's books. All of the dust covers function as posters. I'm not going to hold it up this time because I'm probably going to hold it up upside down. I think I'm batting zero for three so far. Just think of the multiple ways you can use that book. You can use it upside down, sideways, or forward. Look, I mean, however you learn to read, Darkman, I'm not judging you. I opened it right side up this time, so the joke has not worked. Oh, well. Yep, just going to put that right down there. Uh, so going to reach back here um, from our, uh, our good friend, uh, yep, Inspiring Badger Cosplay. I cannot read today. Right behind Dark Man, we have a beautiful Magikarp hat, uh, $10 minimum donation. Hat is probably the best form of Magikarp. Um, I, you know, I don't know about you, Dark Man. Do, do you think there's a better form of Magikarp out there than a hat? Yes. All right. I, we're just going to stick with that. That's probably true. I am generally wrong about hats. It's good, though. I like it. Yeah, it's, it's super cute, and I, I love it. Again, $10 minimum donation. Uh, from our friend Julia Z, we have this beautiful Pokemon Home Sweet Home Cross Stitch. Uh, you know, just a picture of you in Pallet Town with your Pikachu. They're, they're loving it. Uh, it's, that's good. It's, it's adorable. It's, it's only a $15 minimum donation. So, I mean, hey, this is definitely something I can I would put that in the Magikarp hat, to be honest. Oh, okay. Because, like, they're that good that you want to combine them. Oh, okay. Yeah, you want to yeah. put the Magikarp around the Cross Stitch. Yes. I respect that. Yes. Uh, be careful, though. It might evolve into a Gyarados Cross Stitch. Oh, no. That'll be scary. Oh, no. That's bad. Yeah, we'll just put that down real quick. Um, so from, whoops, from our uh, good friend, Bags Brothers Art, we have this absolutely beautiful upside-down print. I'm, uh, I'm doing great today. Yep. Yep. All right, we, then. Yeah, no, no, it's, but it's, a, it's an amazing print of uh, Samus from um, uh, some promotional artwork that was done back in the late 80s to promote the original Metroid game. I mean, I love this piece. It looks ripped straight out of a comic book. When I first saw it, I was like, is, is there an old Metroid comic I've never read? Like, is this just, you know, a piece of that? But uh, no, the original piece of artwork, super cool. And again, it's only a $15 minimum donation. I mean, this is the kind Solid. of thing I'd hang in my room, for sure. Same. Yep, and uh, again, that's now until the end of Pokemon Gold, so uh, make sure to get those donations in. Um, guys, last but not least, we have this absolutely amazing little handmade... Um I'm, come on, I'm, come on, you got it, you got, I got it. I got, I got it, you got it. I'm, I'm not going to mispronounce come on. his come name. On. I've been doing it all week. Come on. Uh, no, Klonoa. There we go. Uh, right. I want to call him Klonoa, or... I, I can't even pronounce it wrong now. I, I've gotten so wrong, I can't do it wrong. It's crazy. But this plushie is absolutely amazing. It was sent to us by Ellen Kramer. It's, it's super detailed. It's super cute. Super soft. It's got the big floppy ears that Klonoa is known for. Love this thing. $20 minimum donation from now until the end of Pokemon Gold. Make sure to get your donations in for it. And guys, don't forget that all donations you guys make are getting you one step closer to entering into the Grand Pies drawing. Oh, yeah. i got to put on the oh, gloves yeah. for this oh, yeah. one. Yeah, you know. Oh, put them on. Yeah, can't, can't handle this one with your bare hands. Oh, yeah. 
So we have this absolutely gorgeous Hylian shield and master sword from our friends over at Heroic Replicas. These are one-to-one -one scale replicas of the Hylian shield and master sword from Breath of the Wild. They are absolutely gorgeous. It's $250 minimum donation, but that is cumulative throughout the marathon. So hey, I mean, you get 20 bucks in now, you get 20 bucks in maybe a little later in the day, and before you know it, you're already just about entered to win this amazing sword. And um, yeah, guys, I think that's going to be just about it for all the prizes we have right now. Always remember to head over to gamesdonequick.com and check out the tracker. If you have any questions about upcoming prizes, speed runs, incentives, bids, all that information is going to be right there for you. Um, and with that, yeah, thank you so much, Darkman, for you know, having me on here. Always love coming out and showing off these cool things. As always, it's a pleasure, Sent. Well, without further ado, why don't we just go ahead and throw it back to the host. Thank you very much for watching. And thank you, Darkman and Sent. I'm sure that KZ run is going to be fantastic as always.